The following is a presentation of The Day. It's the final Friday of football in the month of October, and the playoff picture is becoming more prominent and prevalent, and we'll talk all about it as the Waterford Lancers play host to the Griswold Wheeler Wolverines, all the action live on game day. Game day is brought to you by Waterford Dental Health, solutions for all your dental needs. All that's good begins with a smile, and when you visit our office, your smile is our top priority. Our entire team is dedicated to the personalized and gentle care that you deserve, so visit waterfordentalhealth.com for more information. Casey O'Neill, along with a coach, Pasta Santabria, and it is a beautiful fall night here at Waterford High School. And uh, these two teams, despite the records of 5-1 and one for Griswold and 1-5 and five for Waterford, uh, matchups make fights, and these two teams match up in very interesting ways, and we should see a lot of offense on the field tonight between these two. Definitely, with a full moon, anything can happen tonight. Griswold at 5-1 and one will kick it off, and that means Mr. Everything, uh, Kincaid Rubino, will kick <laughs> it off for Griswold. Uh, back deep for Waterford, among others, Quinn Speller, who has been an exceptional return man as well. We'll tall, call his name often. Rubino punches it to the opposite side. It hugs the sideline and does stay in bounds, and taken there and dropped right at the 20-yard line where the Lancers will have their first possession. Cole Bumgardner with the return. And so we'll see the Waterford offense first. And the one thing, if you've noticed, outside of last week's loss to uh, Wyndham, where they only put up seven, and Fitch, where they only put up seven, you see a lot, 32, 47, 33, 30. The offense hasn't been the problem. We got a good running back in Brady Sutton and a good quarterback in Jack Higgins. And Speller is up amongst the weapons there. But we'll get into where the Lancer problems have been. Griswold, a physical team, very good on defense. Waterford will throw on first down. Higgins rolls out, steps up, breaks a tackle. And he's hit hard by Dean Manzano. And he's brought down for a short game. Saw right there on that first down play, it looks like Griswold will put a spy on Higgins, and that's where Higgins has been most dangerous this year, has been on broken plays and designed rollouts. He's excellent running the football. Way to call it, brother. Yes, they have to have someone hovering over him because his elusiveness going off from tackle to tackle, he will definitely run when he sees daylight. So that's good that they have some kind of scheme protecting and keeping an eye on him. Second and nine. Jet sweep and tripped up. After virtually no gain is Parker Spencer. Good to see him back in the lineup for the Lancers. He had been out with an injury from going back to the preseason, early season games that we saw. Third and seven comes up for the Lancers. You know, I think the toughest thing that we've seen with Lancers, we have a lot of experience watching them, is that they put themselves in third and long, and that makes the defense go out there quickly. That's one of the factors that's been really hurting them. Third down, Higgins to throw. Dumps a screen, middle of the field. And well defended by Griswold. That front Kalwara line. Kalwara on the tackle. Yeah, they weren't mistaken. They read that screen real quick, and they actually dropped their hips and turned back to the point of attack. So that was a good hustle by the front line of the Wolverines. So fourth and five, and that'll send the punter out on the field for Waterford. And... Griswold holds, it will appear. Speller at his own 10 yard line. Snap is high, but good. And the punt is high and also good. Crosses over midfield and takes a nice Waterford bounce. So there was one punting to one, Speller to Rabino, both the feature uh, players of this game. If you want to go to theday.com and check out uh, on any of our social media game day CT, you can check out those features on Speller and Rabino. Griswold will take over. And with Griswold, the offense, old school offense with a modern twist. You're going to mm -hmm. see Luke Cassidy throwing infrequently, but when he takes shots, they're usually big play shots. Kyle Montigny is as fast as they come, and Kincaid Rubino is one of the most dynamic players in the league. A big physical offensive line, and this is where Waterford has had its problems. Tight 
double wing. Rabino gets the handoff. Big hole, breaks a tackle down the sideline. There goes Kincaid Rabino, and he's all the way inside the 25 yard line to the 22, wrestled out of bounds by Westcott. That double wing offense, it could be a very powerful offense when you know where you have to attack. The defenses will cover gaps as much as they can, but that also limits them their ability to have defensive back players. So when you stack it, you got to find out where you have to stack and where to attack. That superpower was well blocked clean and a great big play for them. Not a lot of trickery to Griswold. They'll run that double wing, and then they'll hit a play action deep, uh, and that's why their offense has been so explosive. We're going to take a look at their scores here in a moment. Cassidy under center. This time he goes to Montigny, and Montigny is stood up right at the line of scrimmage, maybe even a yard loss. First to the football for Waterford was Eden Alexander, and that will bring up second and long. Take a look at Griswold's scores. They dropped 60 week one mm -hmm. and then had a great game with Wyndham. But after that, 41, 35, 41, 49. This is a very yes. explosive offense. I watched them firsthand against Bacon Academy. And while Bacon held them to 21 points uh, late in the into late into the game, Griswold was moving the ball regularly. They are very difficult to stop. Uh, even here on second down, they will not move away from what they're good at. Change the formation, Montigny is now the lone setback, and they go toss left to Montigny. He's got a blocker out in front of him, it's Turner, and Montigny will be up towards the sticks, and I think he's got enough for a first down, and that's gonna make it first and 10, Griswold. That was a great job. You know, one of the things as a defensive person, you don't wanna get your front line to get washed down, and then those back and running backs and fullback and the backside guard coming around to block, because again, you're outnumbered, so you have to really penetrate and cause a lot of disruption in that mesh point to make that offense have some difficulty. I talked with Waterford coach Zeth Nolda, and I said, you know, what's been the problem with the defense? And he says, more than anything, it's getting this group to learn how to be more physical and how to tackle with technique yes. and how to tackle with purpose. So a lot of missed tackles, a lot of guys not having proper technique and just you know getting beat physically and that's you know something to learn. Here's a little little counter drop, little trap to Turner, the fullback. It's gonna gain four, it'll be second down. You know, he he referenced Coach Nolda did Bacon Academy's huge improvement from last year's defense to this year's defense, which he attributed on film to to a clear message uh, and teaching about technique and and, uh, and tackling. And he said for this team, knowing at one and five that the postseason is not in play, right. the rest of this season are is teaching. Teaching yes. technique and teaching tackling. You can't teach toughness, but with technique and tackling might come some toughness. Yeah, builds a lot of confidence. Rabino hands it through up the middle, and there's your first touchdown of the ball game as Kincaid Rabino walks into the end zone. Mr. Everything gets the Wolverines on top, 6-0. It's a good first drive for them, definitely showing a lot of power and a lot of technique and knowing where to attack. Rubino listed at 5'11", 170, which I'd call generous. 5'11", <laughs> in high top cleats. Uh, but he is shifty and powerful with great vision, and now he'll stay on to kick the extra point out of the good hold, good snap. Line drive kick is through, 7-0. Right off the board, the Wolverines go down the field and score. 7-0. We'll be right back. You're watching Game Day Live on theday.com. Well, as we head into a brand new season on Game Day, we want something brand new to come to all of you as well. Game Day launching its merchandise store for the first time. Now, as you know, greatness has no off-season, and Game Day has no off-season either. We're always working to provide you the best we can do, and that includes great merch. So come on into the merchandise store for game day. As the season progresses, who knows who's going to say what that'll make it on to the next game day t-shirt. Find out in the merch store. So the Wolverines go right down the field after holding Waterford on a three and out. They go right down the field and they score. Waterford needs to move the ball offensively. You mentioned the defense on the field too much. Right, right there's a good example of you can't have multiple possessions where the defense kind of leans on you yep. and then get back on the field like that. And there's a bullet by Rabino off the front man of the Lancers and it bounced back and I think Griswold says they have it and oh. they do. Jonathan McFeet used his McHands <laughs> and fell on the McBall as 
the Wolverines, with a little bit of chicanery, have the ball in a short field. It's at the 45-yard line of Waterford. Yeah, they must have saw something on film where that center in that uh, return team was right dead center. We always tell them offset one side or the other because the kicker can kick a line drive at you. And if you're not ready for it, you're definitely going to get rid of the ball. I think it's that cheat, right? Sometimes yep. they cheat to turn as the foot's coming on the kick to turn to get back. to, And it, exactly. they miss that line drive right at them because they're out of position. So Montigny and Rubino await. Hand off, Rubino, big hole, breaks tackle. He'll have a first down as he wrestles to the 30-yard line brought down on the play by Dylan Mattis, but first down, Wolverines. I tell you, he runs very physical. As soon as he got to that second level, his shoulder pad level's just driving downfield. And as the tackler made the wrap, that running, <laughs> the running back got at least two or three more yards there on that play. You're right. When you talk about defense, you have to have an attitude and have some kind of symbol of what you're all about. And right now, Waterford's still working on that. First down, Griswold. Montigny cuts it back inside. That was well defended by Waterford off the edge. The jet sweep was taken away, and Montigny will gain, maybe see me lose, maybe a yard. That was a great job by the defense at that point. Again, a jet sweep, it could be read a little bit more easier when you're trying to see what the offense can do. Um, but that play, those defensive linemen penetrated and caused a lot of disruption on that play. So it'll be second and 11. We mentioned on the first drive, Griswold does not, will not get away from what it does, which means that even uh, when they are second and long, third and long, they like their big play guys. So they mm -hmm. will continue to hand the ball off to Montigny and Rubino. Fake it. Cassidy, there comes the deep ball, wide open in the end zone. What a catch. Touchdown, Kyle Montigny from Luke Cassidy. Cassidy to Montigny has been a combination all year long, and the Wolverines capitalize. It's 13 0. Yeah, them safeties looked right there, thinking it was a run play, and he ran right between them, right between the seams, and made a nice catch to score for the Wolverines. 13-0, Rubino will come on for the extra point. Kick is up, kick is through, kick is good. 5.35 remaining in the first, 14-0 Wolverines. You're watching Game Day Live on theday.com. Being part of a great community is so important. People helping and supporting others can be very uplifting and contagious. At Philomena's Restaurant, that's exactly what you get. It's the community hub for not just Waterford, but all of southeastern Connecticut. Birthday parties, anniversary dinners, weddings, sports banquets, a drink with friends, and of course, charity events. Philomena's has been, is, and will always be there for the community. Celebrate and support southeastern Connecticut at Philomena's. Philomena's, Utopia Plaza in Waterford. Waterford. We're back. Griswold with two very impressive drives. 14-0. They lead over Waterford, and we're only partway through the first period in tonight's game. Griswold at 5-1 is indefinite playoff contention. Uh, go and read Mike DeMauro's article in theday.com, and you can see all of the, the four teams in the ECC that are still in playoff contention, Fitch and Griswold and Stonington are all very interesting in terms of their wins and losses, particularly Griswold and Stonington, mm -hmm. uh, because I thought this could be a look-ahead game, one right. of those overlook flat games, because next week Griswold is at Stonington. Stonington currently undefeated, although they have Wyndham and Griswold. So Stonington has Wyndham and Griswold. Griswold has Stonington, and quite frankly, Montville and Plainfield are not going to be there, are not going to compete with them those last two weeks. Right. So right now, Griswold's looking at Stonington. Hit, direct snap, and Higgins overthrows. He was looking for Spencer. It'll be second down. Yeah, one of the things you don't want to do as a team that's being successful is to think that you're, uh, you know, on top of people and being lax. You know, any situation can happen in the game, injuries or personnel or even adjustments of the defense showing you. So they have to be disciplined, and that's one of the things that you see these teams are separating now. Who are the disciplined teams? Who are the teams that are working on trying to get better week to week? Higgins keeps it himself on the RPO and 
gets about seven yards. And honestly, I'm not critical of staff, but if I'm Waterford, I'm put. I'm going to say, Jax, you're going to be sore and tired tomorrow. Yeah. Because yeah. we're going to do a lot of that. Hand off and first down run as Sutman moves the chains. You've got one, what I think is one of the most physical backs in the league in Brady Sutman mm -hmm. and one of the most dynamic playmakers in Jax Higgins. Uh, I think they treat him too often like Aaron Rodgers <laughs> when they should be treating him more like Lamar Jackson. I, I totally agree. You know, it, it, they're the two strongholds of the offense that can create a lot of, um, you know, adjustments for the defense to make those deep plays possible. Higgins rolls, looks, throws, has a man complete. Crossing the 50-yard line is Noah Westcott, and that's a nice first down play. And Waterford looking to go a little up-tempo, which I also like. Well, that's the Brady swagger that I like. Find what's open and play to the defense. Right now, they're playing quarters coverage. Your flats are open, and they're running these little flip packages that are helping them out right now. High snap, handoff, Sutman. And he's wrestled down right at the line of scrimmage, maybe half a yard gain. It's going to bring up third and short. But I think when they when they treat Jax Higgins like Aaron Rodgers, like, you know, drop back, and if, and if your reads aren't there, you can run to extend the play, I think it should be more like read one yep. and then go. Yeah, a lot quicker. If your first read's not there, as that's going to be right up to the sticks for Sutman. We're going to have to see what the officials say. I think they're going to mark him about half a yard short. Waterford will go here on fourth down, down two touchdowns. I think it's if your first read's not there, run. Because I think running the ball for him, we're going to see handoff. And Sutman's not going to get there. He pitches it back to Higgins. What a smart play by Sutman. And Higgins is off to the races. And this is going to be a big play for the Lancers. Awesome job. Wow, talk about receptive. <laughs> Yeah, he looked like he was wrapped up for a loss of three, but then he saw his quarterback there and said, hey, why not? Give it a shot. They're actually trying to do something there, and that was a great opportunity for this Waterford offense to go and make a big play like that. Awesome hey, job. Hey, Brady and Jax, you <laughs> just made the great eight. That's right. Peter, that one's in. Jet sweep. Spencer looking for the pylon. Touchdown, Parker Spencer. And after the big play from Sutman and Higgins, Waterford capitalizes and cuts into the Griswold lead. What a play. That was awesome. Man, talk about the momentum now. It seems like the fans actually woke up a little bit. The student body over there cheering along. And we have our young little cheerleaders here trying to motivate the fans with the cheerleaders of Waterford High School. Well, you hit it on the head. Sutman was wrapped up for a two-yard loss. Yep. They're, they're done. Yep. And he said, I got to, you know, all I can do is pitch it back to my quarterback, yep. which he did. S such a, a heads-up play. And then Higgins, the playmaker, took it from there. Yeah, I think the, the Wolverines were kind of shocked. They just kind of stood on their feet thinking if that was something that really was possible. The extra point is no good, but the Lancers are on the board. It's 14-6 with 3.32 remaining. You're watching Game Day Live on the day.com. After the game, follow Game Day CT on social media to see our pick for the Scient Federal Credit Union top play. Pave the way for your students' financial success with a MySci account from Scient Federal Credit Union. Open a high-yield MySci savings account today and help support a positive financial future for your student. Visit SciFCU.org to learn more. See, this is where the, the cheerleaders are not paying attention. It's, it's telling them what to do. Yeah. The song that's playing is telling them to jump around. They're young. They'll get it. I think if, if we start to do it, maybe they might pick it up. But they're facing well, the football First of field. all, if We're we good. jump around, there's a dangerous chance That's that right. the bleachers might collapse. It could because the Bolts can't handle somebody you know, like us. They don't know what, they don't know what we're bringing. Our swagger brings a ton of That's pasta. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so Waterford with a – I'd say the best part about that was not only the heads-up play, but taking advantage of the heads-up play and getting into the end zone right away on the next play, right. seizing the momentum as you, you – know, and while you have it, now the negative is you got to kick it off to Griswold, and you know their Still offense has way. been so good. But now is where you got again. I would not be dropping into my same defense. Mm -hmm. I'm this series right here. I would do something completely different defensively. You know why? Why not? Why not? Yeah. Because here's where you might have a chance to surprise Griswold. Maybe get a maybe get a three and out or get a turnover. 
Rubino's going to let it roll into the end zone. It'll be first and 10 for Griswold at the 20. So in other words, my, if I'm playing this, you know, maybe I go into a, you know, nine in the box and say, let's go. I'm going to yeah. put two, I'll, I'm going to play single on the, you know, whatever. <laughs> Or maybe I'm going to say we're run blitzing everybody on the first three, like whatever it might be. Or maybe I do something crazy like go into a, you know, a, a hard show with with six linebackers across to and say <laughs> I'm going to give you I'm going to give you three, but I'm not going to give you more. But the point is, <laughs> you got to this is where you got to take some you know chances at throwing a little. You're bringing up out. that magnetic football game. That's what I'm seeing right now. <laughs> That's right, six across. Rubino. Uh, he tried to bounce it outside, tripped up, and was brought down there by Devin Powers after a gain of one. So there's a point that just came across here. You know, when we played the uh, defensive front for the double wing, we asked our outside linebackers to be destructive off the edge. We had our best physical players crash those ends down. When the guard's pulling, crash him down to create a pocket that's going to bounce where your outside corner and safety are available. So that was a great play from Waterford there. They, they have to do that more consistently. Second and 11. Cassidy will send Rubino into the eye. They go toss. Rubino has a hole, bounces it, stays on his feet, and he's going to have a first down, and the chains will move. That defense right there had the backers, who were actually crashing off the edge, backed up. And I know Griswold read that. Obviously, they knew that an outside play was going to be the advantage. Ball's right at the 30-yard line. First and 10, Wolverines. Grizzle has a pretty good-looking line. Those guys are actually moving the ball pretty nice. First down. Pass. Cassidy rolls, and he'll throw that one away. Well defended by Waterford. I'm not going to lie, um, it wasn't until the crowd yelled pass <laughs> that I was uh, that I realized that uh, Cassidy still had the football. Really? Oh, yeah, I was looking for the running back <laughs> on that one. No, I saw when the offensive linemen got into their pass pro position, I was like, okay, let's see what happens here. It's so funny. I'm, I'm trying to follow the football, and you're looking at the offensive line. Offensive yeah. line, see, for you, as both a coach and a lineman, exactly. the offensive line will tell you everything. Yeah, there's a blend, and there's a flow tree throughout the years of watching film. You could see what they're doing, and especially, you know, what is uh, coming from the defense. You know. Cassidy sends Montigny back into the eye. This is where they've run toss. This time... They hand it off to Turner. Turner has a good-sized hole, and he'll gain seven. Josh Turner, straight up the gut. You know, some tips that I always teach to the front seven, you know, and our coaches that had, you know, defensive line and linebackers, respectively, all cape tips out there that they could see from an offensive lineman. You know, sometimes the pressure of the fingers causing a little arch tells them that they're in more run-based stance. Or sometimes a call that they've heard consistently that sets up a specific play prepares that defense to see what run it is or see what pass it is. So, you know, maybe there are things that they saw, Waterford saw, that could help them out. Third and short. We'll call it two. Definitely looks like a run play. Cassidy hands off. Turner reaching towards the pylon, towards the stick. <laughs> reaching for the line of scrimmage to make, and he is going to have the first down. That's a great G play. That guard actually gets a little hitch step, allows that end to come up, and he runs right downfield, blocks him, allows that little gap to create uh, the running back uh, a chance to get downhill and get that first down. And this is the kind of drive where Griswold starts to wear on you, right? Waterford better in this series than they were in the previous right. two series. You know, they got a couple of losses, you know, got to third and, and short, but Griswold just keeps churning and churning and churning and leaning yep. on you and leaning on you. That takes toll. Definitely does. Cassidy surveys the Waterford defense. Montigny. About three yards. You know, throughout the season, Waterford seems to be, you know, they're motivated when they have a positive play, and they stay with it until it kind of burns out. And one of the things that I think that has hurt them is that they live and die by that, and then there's no discipline that can happen, you know, to keep them going. So when they play off momentum, Waterford looks really good. It's just when they have those little moments of, you know, fumbles or bad tackling or, you know, big plays that put them in a situation where they kind of play flat. 
Second and five, they give Montigny a better, better gain than I expected. Now Rubino stutter steps, gets the handoff, straight up the middle with that burst, and a nice job by the Lancers, holding him to two yards. It was a Van Overloop and Alexander on the tackle for Waterford, making up third and three. The thing about Rubino that I love as a back is his pacing, his tempo. Mm -hmm. uh, he will, on the outside plays, kind of glide with his blockers mm -hmm. and then at the at the moment burst yes on the plays up the middle he bursts he doesn't yeah. he doesn't mess around when he's in the middle of the field he knows that he's got to go north and south we are at the end of the first period it's 14-6 griswold big third down play coming up on the other side you're watching the game day live on the day.com being part of a great community is so important. People helping and supporting others can be very uplifting and contagious. At Philomena's Restaurant, that's exactly what you get. It's the community hub for not just Waterford, but all of Southeastern Connecticut. Birthday parties, anniversary dinners, weddings, sports banquets, a drink with friends, and of course, charity events. Philomena's has been, is, and will always be there for the community. Celebrate and support Southeastern Connecticut at Philomena's. Philomena's, Utopia Plaza in Waterford. 14-6. Waterford trailing Griswold and Griswold with a big third down play right at midfield. I would expect that this is a two down territory. This is where Griswold is apt to take a shot, right? Everyone thinks it's gonna be a run, third and four, third and a long three. This is that play action, knowing you're gonna go for it on fourth down either way. It's a great setup, but I think that they still go with what they do well. It's up, ah, Hard fall. count, and they got Waterford to almost jump. Instead, it's off tackle right to Turner, and I believe it's gonna be plenty for a first down. I think we should have a book for this season. It's hard counts and fumbles have been major factors in most of the games we probably played, but that, again, great discipline by Waterford. I thought his head went over, and that would have been a neutral zone infraction, but these referees right now are just letting them play. That's really good. Um, you know, I learned a lot about the double wing with Coach Bracken, and he used to be the coach over Griswold and helped us out through the legend years there. And one of the amazing things is when you run between tackle to tackle, it is a hard run scheme. When you're outside, you feather it, and that's why I think this team has that kind of package. First and 10. Cassidy gives to Rubino. Rubino flipped after a gain of eight. And if you watched this past week's grade eight, you saw Kincaid Rubino hurdle a cornerback, defensive back on his way to a touchdown. Rubino is acrobatic, athletic, and always dangerous, second and two. At halftime, stay tuned. You yep. can see that grade eight. You can watch that Rubino play where he shows his ups and hurdles. El Gran Ocho. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good in Spanish too, brother. It does. <laughs> Sabado Gigante. Yeah. <laughs> Second and short. Rubino, handoff, quick burst, first down. Chains will move. Lancers rally for the tackle, but it'll be a Griswold first down. Again, you're right. This physical offense. It's just creating things that even the coaches are just trying to find out what can they do to create kind of a disturbance with this offense. You know, again, you have to be risky. You have to learn how to probably add into your package some stunts that you have from the fronts that you have. You know, and hopefully they have it. Uh, otherwise, they're going to be replacing players and kind of keeping that healthy off defensive line front going. But again, I'll tell you right now, Griswold's offense looks pretty good for the first time that I'm seeing them. Nothing fancy but they are potent and they have playmakers. Just like a good old BLT. Hand off to Turner. Three yards, head down. It's gonna bring up third and short. You know, they do have some size in the front line, I'll tell you, the big 75. That young man, he's pretty good. He's been coming off the ball. I think it's Aiden Rourke. At the six, six, 255. Yeah, got some movement, and they, and they're really, you know, seems confident. You know, when you have your offensive line knowing where to block and where to attack, 
their nimbleness, their energy, and their kind of finesse comes into play. Second down, handoff to Montigny. Barnhill on the tackle for Waterford. It'll bring up third and four. And this is the best third down Waterford's had in a while. They're gonna, it's gonna be two down territory here. Griswold's gonna certainly go for it if they're held, but this is where Waterford the chess match fascinates me. Yep. You wanna send you wanna send a run blitz here, thinking they're gonna run it? Well and, Barnhill and risk did a great popped. job. I mean he saw it real quick and he got into the hole. Some people watch and hesitate. You safeties and corners in this defensive scheme must realize once that gap is open or your lead assignment is telling you to run play, come downhill. Don't be afraid. Third and four. Rubino gets it. He has the first down. Cuts it. Makes a move, and he'll be inside the 10-yard line. And it'll be first and goal Wolverines on another beautiful run from Kincaid Rubino. Still standing. Never went down, Ray. <laughs> Never went down, Ray. What movie is that from? Well, you got me on that Raging one. Raging Bull. Raging Bull. That's right. Wow. We, we've got an injured Griswold Wolverine on the field, so we're going to take a quick timeout. It's 14-6 Griswold, and they got it first and goal. You're watching Game Day Live on the day.com. Well, as we head into a brand new season on Game Day, we want something brand new to come to all of you as well. Game Day launching its merchandise store for the first time. Now, as you know, greatness has no off season and Game Day has no off season either. We're always working to provide you the best we can do and that includes great merch. So come on into the merchandise store for Game Day. As the season progresses, who knows who's gonna say what that'll make it onto the next Game Day t-shirt. Find out in the merch store. After the game, follow Game Day CT on social media to see our pick for the Scient Federal Credit Union top play. Pave the way for your students' financial success with a MySci account from Scient Federal Credit Union. Open a high-yield MySci savings account today and help support a positive financial future for your student. Visit ScientFCU.org to learn more. Fourteen six Griswold on top, and they have the football first and goal from the seven yard line. This drive, it has been a little bit of Turner, a little bit of Montigny, and a lot of Kincaid Rubino, and I would expect nothing less as Luke Cassidy brings the troops up to the line of scrimmage. First down, handoff Rubino around right end, cuts it back, cuts it inside, heads for the. End zone, dives, touchdown, Wolverines. Mm -hmm. Number two for number one, Kincaid Rubino, back into the end zone. Wolverines increase the lead to 20 to six. Talking about one, and you know, the big here, <laughs> we talk about yak yardage, his stats must be padded with yak yardage because as soon as he gets there, great blocking again, he wants to go and get into the end zone. He's a hungry running back. Now that is YAC, yards after contact, mm -hmm. not YAK, meaning you're running like the, the big animal. Or if you ate like, you know, what was it called, Epicac? <laughs> yeah, that yak yardage, like yeah. yak yardage, not the same thing. <laughs> Rubino in for the extra point. Griswold trying to figure out where it wants its wing. Now it's got it. Good snap, good hold, kick is up. It is through, it is true. 21-6, Wolverines on top with 8.28 remaining here in the half. We'll take a quick timeout. You're watching Game Day Live on theday.com. Fall is here, which means it's time for Game Day's Great Eight. The best eight plays of the week submitted by you, the viewers, on any of our social media platforms. You send us the best videos from practice or the game, any sport in the fall, might see about putting it on the great eight of the week. Game Day is a production of The Day Publishing Company. If you'd like to support Game Day and help us continue to bring you the best in Connecticut high school sports, please consider purchasing a print or digital subscription to The Day at theday.com slash subscribe. 21-6, Griswold on top. <laughs> They're playing like the song, Little Eye of the Tiger. It's Eye of the Wolverine right now, mm -hmm. as Rubino will kick it off. Punches it hard. Waterford. 
Bumgardner. There's straight a up the gut. Now he's got to get to the outside, and he's dragged down by the kicker, Rabino as he crosses the 40-yard line. But Cole Bumgardner, the junior, with an excellent return for the Lancers. That was a great blocking scheme by the return team. And what they did was they selected a number on the right side, and they picked him up in an angle block, allowing him to run to the middle and make a cutback. So great blocking scheme right there by the return team. First and 10, Waterford in great field position at the 38-yard line of Griswold. You know, down two scores. Punching one in here would go a long way. They, they had a nice good drive going last time before the wacky fourth down play. Yeah. Higgins, Speller in motion. He hasn't touched it yet. They give it to him on the jet sweep. Speller tries to bust it to the outside. He does. He cuts it back now and has a first down. So Quinn Speller... He's a playmaker. Get the ball in his hands is what Coach Nolda said. They want to get him involved. Well, he's yep. involved here. That was a great job that gave him the ball right there. Try to get him involved and let this defense know that there's several players that they have to keep an eye on. But again, you talk about momentum. Little things that can really make Waterford feel good motivates them and makes them play a lot better. That kickoff return sets the tone. That's why, again, this is a three-part series of football. You know, offense, defense, and special teams help each other out. They're going to say he was a yard short as he got knocked out of bounds, so it's second and one. Hand off to Sutman. He'll have the first down and crosses the 25-yard line where he's hammered down to the ground. Coming out of the pack for Griswold is DeAndre Bransford, and it's going to be first down, Lancers. Good job for the offense. This is, again, helping the defense you know, stay energetic. I know there's two-way players in high school football, but when you have the other players out there break, you know, getting themselves together, it helps out. Hand off again to Sutman, bounces it outside, trips as he was trying to get outside the tackle box, and that's going to be no gain. It'll bring up second and long. Sutman and Higgins, both juniors, along with Parker Spencer, who's only a sophomore, are going to be the focal mm -hmm. point of next year's Lancer offense. Next year, you're going to see Higgins back at quarterback, Sutman back at running back. You're going to see Spencer in that wing roll and slot roll. So you're going to see a lot of this, these guys next year. But right now, this group still trying to find its way on the offensive and defensive line. Mm -hmm. A lot of young players. Higgins, designed roll, keeps it, cuts it, and a beautiful tackle in the middle of the field made by Bransford. It's going to bring up third and 12. We have a, another injured Wolverine on the field, so while they attend to him, we'll take a quick timeout. 21-6 Wolverines. You're watching Game Day Live on theday.com. Being part of a great community is so important. People helping and supporting others can be very uplifting and contagious. At Philomena's Restaurant, that's exactly what you get. It's the community hub for not just Waterford, but all of southeastern Connecticut. Birthday parties, anniversary dinners, weddings, sports banquets, a drink with friends, and of course, charity events. Philomena's has been, is, and will always be there for the community. Celebrate and support southeastern Connecticut at Philomena's. Philomena's, Utopia Plaza in Waterford. Waterford. Game Day is a production of The Day Publishing Company. If you'd like to support Game Day and help us continue to bring you the best in Connecticut high school sports, please consider purchasing a print or digital subscription to The Day at theday.com slash subscribe. We are back. Jonathan McFeet being helped off the field. He's walking of his own accord, so he looks like he's doing okay, just shaking up a bit, and he is on his way to the sideline, and Waterford will have third and 12. So Sutman will stand to the left of Higgins. Twin receivers on both sides. Higgins to throw. Plenty of time. Looking up for Spencer, and it's incomplete. Well defended at the pylon by the Wolverines on the defense that time. Griswold. That was a great defensive uh, you know, adjustment. What they did was they played a zone coverage on backside. It looked like a you know, cover two on that side or deep. But then they played man-to-man -man here, and they liked the matchup. So Waterford did run, run a good play with the wheel route. But again, he read that, played it on his hip, and made the play. It was a great job. The throw was there. I think it was overthrown a bit from where mm -hmm. the receiver could get to, but it was placed at the pylon for a reason. You right. can see that throw went to the pylon. Waterford will go for it here on fourth down. 
Coverage on that play was, by the way, from Jonathan Torres. We should make mention because it was outstanding coverage on Spencer. Mm -hmm. Higgins gets a nice block from Sutman. Rolls, throws, has him in, and it's Speller. Touchdown! What a play! Quinn Speller turned around, found the ball. Higgins put it on a dime. Touchdown, Waterford. The same play. But then instead of going for the outside route, he knew just to throw right down the middle because he there, there was the mismatch. What give, a play. Good give job. the credit to Quinn Speller. He was running, looking over his right shoulder. The ball was thrown to his left shoulder. He turned his head, found the ball, and didn't break stride. A lot of receivers, when they're looking for the ball, their footwork changes, not Speller's. He stayed on it the whole time. Touchdown, Lancers, to get the crowd back in it. See, again, when they have a little momentum in their hearts, they play well. Not bad. Kick is up from Sheehan. It's through and it's true. And with 6.41 remaining, 21-13, Griswold on top. Wolverines will have the ball on the other side. You're watching Game Day Live on the day.com. <laughs> well, as we head into a brand new season on Game Day, we want something brand new to come to all of you as well. Game Day launching its merchandise store for the first time. Now, as you know, greatness has no off-season, and game day has no off-season either. We're always working to provide you the best we can do, and that includes great merch. So come on into the merchandise store for game day. As the season progresses, who knows who's going to say what that'll make it on to the next game day t-shirt. Find out in the merch store. Well, the cheerleaders are in full force tonight. You've got... The Waterford varsity cheerleaders, you've got the young, the youth cheerleaders, the Lancers of all ages down there. That's awesome. And they're pretty <laughs> happy right now because a big play from quarterback Jax Higgins to wide receiver Quinn Speller. And a lot of things had to happen on that play. Yes, it Start did. Start with Brady Sutman staying mm -hmm. home as the running back and standing up and picking up the edge rusher to allow Higgins those two steps on the strong side roll yep. to be able to throw that ball accurately and with good you know a little punch to it yep kick rolls comes down to Rabino. Rabino breaks a few tackles still on his feet Waterford can't tackle him and Rabino crosses the 40 to the 44 and that is well there's no other way to say it that was shoddy tackling yeah. from the Lancers they're missing vitamin T that's something that you have to practice every day uh, you know it's it, it's kind of again the momentum's in their favor I know Rubino's a great running back, but you got to hold him down. My, my, my good friend John McCoola, former quarterback at Mookie. New London High School, right. used to joke all the time, if, ever, if, I, if I ever yelled, technique, he would go right down. Isn't this a quarterback? He'd yep. go right down into the tackling stance, ready, yep. to, ready to tackle, looking at the hips, ready. He's like, yep. I got him focused. That's kind of a fundamental. At, yep. at, you know, Rubino, as we see Montigny with the ball right now, Montigny's got great speed. He reverses field and gets up towards the first down. Montigny the same thing, both Rubino yep. and Montigny. If you don't, they're shifty. They're, hip, they're shifty, shifty hips. Yep. Right, they got those wiggle hips. Slicing you, and dicing. If <laughs> you don't set the belly button right. and engage, you know, and go through, you're going to get, you're going to whiff. And if you're trying to just push them or bounce them, that's not going to get it done. Well, brother, you, you made a good point there. You know, when we're tackling or we teach tackling, eyes are on the thigh board of the running back because you can't, really do anything different when the running backs hips turn to that area they're running to that area so you know, hopefully they'll continue to do those basic techniques to get those tackles there second and one Rabino goes to the eye toss right to Rabino Turner out in front as a blocker Rabino down the sideline first down as he crosses the 40 yard line Wolverines in business with 530 remaining here in the half you know, we talk about practice, and, and one of the things that we used to do was every drill that we had or every circuit we had incorporated tackling. You know, um, then again, you have the fundamentals of doing what is called just dry runs, run fits, um, you know, then reviewing it in film. Those three things we never, ever had a day off on unless it was just pregame for the, for the game. You know, so again, if it's instilled on a daily basis, it definitely develops attitude. It'll de develop good technique good coverage, and hopefully, you know, that swagger that the defense needs. Montigny gets it. He's trying to get it outside, and he's not going to do it. Powers wrestled him down. What Loss a play. Of eight a yards job. on the other side of midfield. Devin Powers with a big tackle, and that's the 
biggest defensive play Waterford's made tonight. Yeah, that attitude and energy on that play was really good. He saw it, and he again, we were teaching eyes on the thigh board, wrap it up and grabbing cloth. That's another thing, too, that they have to learn. That first player is really probably not going to be the dominant tackle in that play, but if he grabs cloth, it slows those running backs down, it gets pursuit to come in quicker. So you continue to grab and be physical there, Waterford. I'm going to give you uh, tackling. is I'm going to equate it to a skill in another sport, uh, and I'll explain after this second down play here from the Wolverines. Cassidy sends Rabino in motion. Cassidy's going to throw. Rolls has Rabino, but Montigny went up. That ball was intended for Rabino <laughs> on the wheel. Montigny went up and almost made the one-handed catch, but it goes incomplete. Yeah, there must have been a miscue there because we don't ever expect two receivers on the same route. Uh, I guess it was a developed flood, and maybe at that time Rubino just decided, hey, I'm going to fade it out knowing that there was a defender there. So uh, nice opportunity for a great catch there, another great eight, but didn't happen. I look at tackling kind of like I look at rebounding in basketball, which is a lot of it is technique. If you have proper technique in tackling, it will go a long way towards making you a good tackler. There's technique in basketball towards rebounding, but at the end of it, part of rebounding is effort, hustle, and grit, yep. and part of tackling is effort, hustle, and grit. Even if you're at, like, whatever you got to do <laughs> to make the tackle or to make the rebound. Cassidy reverses it, throws a backdoor screen pass to Bransford, and Bransford brought down. And it's going to be short of the original line of scrimmage. It's going to bring up fourth and 15. I think this is going to be the first punt of the game for the Wolverines. A great series for Waterford there. You put him in a situation where it's third and long. Again, Waterford could play those kind of coverage plays. That's something that they've done well. And to see the double screen occur there and to stay home, great job by them right now. And this helps the... Uh, just the water for momentum to continue. All right, let's play a little 1v1. The punter, number one, Kincaid Rubino. The returner, Quinn Speller, number one, one to one. Let's see who gets the better of the deal. Rubino stands at his 40, takes the snap, rolls right, rolls right, rolls right, and then bangs a good punt that takes a great bounce and is down at the 12-yard line. I love awesome. that. That's an athletic yes. play by Kincaid Rubino. Waterford will have it though, first and 10 with 3.46 remaining in the half. What a momentum builder it would be if the Lancers forget even scoring. Right. If they can hold on the ball and drive it the rest of the half. Yeah, it looked like again, a one and five versus five and one in that first quarter, thinking that we were gonna continue to see this happen. But again, those little things, those momentum changers, Waterford loves to play with momentum and if they keep it, they're gonna be positive. Well, the first down, Defensive play by Powers with a, on the big loss. Mm -hmm. That's huge because then Waterford defensively yes. can start playing a little softer, and not worrying about the deep ball. I mean, not, you know, they can take that away. Mm -hmm. First down, Higgins looking to throw, has his man over the middle. It's intercepted by Montigny. Higgins was looking for Westcott and he had him, but Montigny stepped in front of it, and that was a good route and a good throw, maybe two miles an hour softer than it needed to be. Awesome job by Montigny. He saw the drag route coming across. He knew that the quarterback, well, again, zone coverage allows you to keep your eyes on the quarterback. As he sees the quarterback looking at his receiver there, he just took off, man, and he just made a great catch. A perfect throw could have been a great possible big play for Waterford, but no, it was stolen from the Wolverines. Sometimes you just have to credit the other guy for making a play. I don't know that you know, Higgins did anything wrong and Westcott no. did anything wrong. Sometimes you just got to say, nice play nice there. Nice play. Yep. Kyle Montigny, tip your hat. Tip your hat. They're going to send Montigny into the backfield. Fake the toss to him, give it to Rubino. He bounces outside, being chased there by Powers. Rubino, good head, speed, head of speed, puts his head down and crosses the 20. Yeah, they can get to the outside real quick, and that's a great opportunity for them to get some big yards like that. You know, when you play perimeter football and you're now in the wide side of the field, I've always kind of told my defensive backs, adjust a little bit. Get yourself a little outside to inside at leverage. So that way, if it does run to the inside, you could come and help out, um, but you avoid those big plays to the outside. So that's going to be second and one. Nine-yard gain on first down, which means everything in the Griswold playbook is in play here. Cassidy fakes the handoff, rolls, throws, and it's tipped by Powers. Great defensive play by Powers. He was looking for Pelletier, 
and Powers was there with the fingertips. Well, Powers did the same thing that you know the Wolverines did. He played that zone and read it and batted the ball down. He should have picked it, though, because he had some beautiful open lane to run to. Waterford needs to have this big play here. This is where you need to take all that you have left in this half to stop them. Because if you stop them or you force them to try to do some field goals, I know this might be a two-play possession for them, but um, you know, this could really keep the momentum. There's another player down. We have another injured Wolverine, so we're gonna take a quick timeout while they attend to him. 2.50 remaining in the half. 21-13 Griswold with the football. We'll be right back. You're watching Game Day Live on theday.com. After the game, follow Game Day CT on social media to see our pick for the Scient Federal Credit Union top play. Pave the way for your students' financial success with a MySci account from Scient Federal Credit Union. Open a high-yield MySci savings account today and help support a positive financial future for your student. Visit ScientFCU.org to learn more. So heading off the field, that's quarterback Luke Cassidy. So this third and short play will be run with the backup quarterback, Kobe Mills, the sophomore in the game. When in doubt, give it to your senior back. It's a great push by the offensive line there. Kind of had a little Philadelphia Eagle swagger to get that first down. First down, and that'll be marked just outside the 10. Looks like maybe the 14 yard line, right on almost on the 15. And Mills is gonna stay in the game right now. I think they're gonna attend to Cassidy probably for, at least for the remainder of this half. So this is where the offensive line's gotta take it right now and own it. Be a good physical group to go and say, hey, we'll run it every play and get into the end zone and help our quarterback here. Mills. Takes the handoff. They're going to have the young sophomore throw. He does. Has him in. It's complete. Broken tackle. Waiting for the signal. Touchdown. Touchdown. DeAndre Bransford. And how about the sophomore Colby <laughs> Mills with the touchdown he, he pass? Shut, he shut my whole philosophy down in one play. You know, I'm thinking, hey, keep him safe. Run the ball. And then the coach has guts to just say, hey, we have an opportunity to see what's going on. So that's the faith base of this program. This is what we're talking about. When everybody starts to work together in practice and you have those youngsters that are in the beginning looking like they might not be players that, that would play varsity football and step up, that's a great attitude right there by that quarterback and that helps that team to score. You know, Mills with a great throw to Bransford. He was in a, you know, on the play action as Rubino in for the extra point. From there, and that one is blocked. From there, however, it was another example of the tackling. They try to just knock Bransford out of bounds rather than tackle him, yep. and he broke the tackle for the touchdown. 2-10 remaining. Waterford blocks the extra point. It's 27-13 Wolverines. You're watching Game Day Live on the day.com. Game Day is a production of The Day Publishing Company. If you'd like to support Game Day and help us continue to bring you the best in Connecticut high school sports, please consider purchasing a print or digital subscription to The Day at theday.com slash subscribe. Being part of a great community is so important. People helping and supporting others can be very uplifting and contagious. At Philomena's Restaurant, that's exactly what you get. It's the community hub for not just Waterford, but all of southeastern Connecticut. Birthday parties, anniversary dinners, weddings, sports banquets, a drink with friends, and of course, charity events. Philomena's has been, is, and will always be there for the community. Celebrate and support southeastern Connecticut at Philomena's. Philomena's, Utopia Plaza in Waterford. Waterford. 2-10 remaining in the half, 27-13, Wolverines on top. They're going to kick it off, and Waterford with 2-10 and some timeouts does have an opportunity here to try to get one in. Wolverines have it to open the second half. Hey, at halftime, you're going to want to stay put. All kinds of feature action, including the grade eight, features on Quinn Speller and Kincaid Rubino. And then, of course, you're going to want to stick around because it's three pounds of pasta. Woo! And I'm feeling it today. I haven't eaten all day, too. All I have was, ba 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 was it Belgium waffles. Oh, I love Belgium That's waffles. it with some blueberries. I'm trying to keep my sugar level low today. Oh, what a great kick. And just into wow. the end zone. It trickles. <laughs> Waterford will have it first and 10 at their own 20. If anything, I was if I'm coaching Waterford, I would say, hey, guys, don't stop what you're doing. Let's keep it going. we got 210. We've scored quicker before. Let's just keep it consistent keep that ball protected. That's all. Go out there and have some fun. They got some good players. 
So the ball will be marked at the 20 with 2.10 remaining, 27-13, and Waterford will send out Higgins. Higgins will operate out of the shotgun. Sends Speller in motion. Fakes the jet sweep to Speller, and Higgins will keep it himself, and he'll have a nice gain of seven on first down. Definitely a good run. Seems like right now Griswold's playing a little man-to-man -man as that safety went in with him in motion. It just gave that quarterback a chance to say, hey, my five linemen will block those guys in front and I'll be able to get through the hole. Second and two. Lancer's looking to drive here. Higgins to throw. Pressured, steps up, throws on the run, and it's complete for a first down to Parker Spencer. Nice catch by the sophomore going to the ground at the 40-yard line. It's great to see Parker play. I mean, preseason we were talking about a lot of good things about him, and he got hurt. And he's back right now playing full force. Yeah, he's also an exceptional guard on the basketball team, so keeping him healthy is you know, prominent for the Lancers. Higgins to throw on first down, and it's just off the fingertips of Westcott incomplete. It'll bring up second and 10 from the, what's called the 38-yard line. One of the interesting parts about Griswold is that it has four real great athletes in the defensive <laughs> backfield. Uh, Rubino being among them, but also Jonathan Torres, who we saw on great coverage, Montigny. So when they get a player like, Spe like Quinn Speller, who can beat most teams and did beat Griswold for one as well, you know that they've got guys who can run with them. Uh, and you can see Griswold taking that away right now, dropping their guys yep. farther and farther back. Higgins to throw, setting up a screen. Saw that one coming. There's Sutman. Sutman showing his speed and his toughness. He'll have a first down into Griswold territory at the 47-yard line. First down Lancers as they move the chains. Well, you see that what happens when you play a kind of coverage like that, you have to have those linebackers and defensive line understand. If there's a screen, you got to turn your hips and come back to the line of scrimmage. And they didn't do that. So a great big play for Waterford. Unfortunately, as they were trying to go into the NASCAR package, Westcott anticipated the snap and jumped and it will be a legal procedure so it'll be second that's me first down and 15 now they're back into their own territory at the 48. so you talk about nascar and you know there's some i just uh, the 101 football for families here is these calls are designed to kind of give them an idea of what they're expected to do so you can call nascar you can call it kyle petty they know automatically that's a fast kind of uh set that they want to do Higgins looking over to the sidelines, wants some advice from his coach. Has what he needs. Gonna throw, quick out, it goes to Spencer. Spencer wisely goes out of bounds, but he got back. The penalty yardage plus a couple more. It'll be second down in nine. More importantly, the clock stops with 37 seconds. Continuing on with the calls too, you know, sometimes you can actually tag a NASCAR call and it'll be a specific play that they'll run if they practice it during the week. Some other teams use faster animals or even- Cheetah. The Cheetah. Jaguar. Exactly, Jaguar. Greyhound. Yep, Greyhound, that's another one. Whip it. Whip it. You see? Whip it good, I would have thought 80s. That was a good 80s, one. 80s band. 80s band. Not fast animal. No. Yeah, that's the problem. It was if a good you one. can't was whip it, it I'd, 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 I'd want to whip they it They still good. wear their red cones. Broken play, I think. Higgins keeps it himself. He's going to dive and have a first down at the 35-yard line. So there's a playmaker by Jax Higgins. The chains are going to move with 29 seconds. Waterford's going to call a timeout, but the Lancers are on the go. you got to love Waterford, I'll tell you right now. That quarterback has a lot of spirit, and he fuels the offense. So, you know, definitely has to be something that other players need to step up to the plate and say, hey, I'm going to work with this guy. Good game so far, brother. We were expecting a lot of uh, <laughs> mishaps happening here, but it's still a tight game. Well, I was expecting a lot of offense. We've gotten yep. our wishes from the offense, you know, 40 first half points with the potential for some more. Did a goal, have to go a long way to outdo the NFA East Lime game we no, had man. last week when it comes to points. You know, my head was still when I got home looking left and right with all the run plays that were just going like a tennis match. I had that little kind of anxiety. I'll tell you, there was great players playing that game. Yeah, and it's funny because that win last week by East Lyme kind of put them back in the postseason conversation. I mentioned four mm -hmm. teams before. They're the fourth team, the one that I hadn't mentioned, that is still very much alive yep. for playoff possibilities. They've got a dire schedule. But if they win, they could get in. 
First down, Higgins to throw, corner blitz, picked up, throws over the middle for Spencer, incomplete. Rubino over the top of Torres in coverage for Griswold. A nice little delayed blitz by the outside linebacker there. He read his coverage first, then he realized his back was staying home, so I can go. He, again, these man-to-man -man principles allow automatic blitzes to happen when they see it. So, for example, if you're responsible for the running back and you're in that side and that running back settles in without showing any type of uh, route, you can actually go in there, and that's what happened. Yeah, Josh Turner, the, time, the timing of it was absolutely spot on, mm -hmm. and he got to Higgins right as he was going to release the ball, and I think made him release it maybe a, little a full tick of a second yeah. before he would have liked to have. So second and 10 with 22 seconds remaining. Speller in motion across. Higgins to throw, pressured from Turner. Gets it out on the screen to Sutman. Flag from the back judge after a gain of five, but we'll see what the penalty is. Well, the receiver was running his route and the safety knocked him pretty much to the ground. That's probably gonna be something of defensive holding. Well, Speller on the previous play, even though he wasn't the intended target, was having a conversation on his way back to the huddle with the official. And I think he was saying, hey, they're bumping me. You know, when I'm trying to run across the field, they're bumping me. And if that was the case, that might be the call that you're seeing here. Official Ken Danowitz is coming over and talking with. That's Kenny. Coach Nolda. Yeah. He looks good. Boy, man, we're, we're aging smoothly around here. Saw him before the game. He was doing his uh, stretches and his uh, high, <laughs> high, high knees. And I said to him, I said, I'm impressed that you can still get your knees that high, man. With him and Jeff Ziegler back in the days of Plymouth State's era of the Panthers, it's so great to see him still uh, doing something that he loves. That is a defensive hold against yeah. Griswold. So, I mean, some defenses you're allowed to jam, Case. I mean, you want to be right in front, two yards under it. You could jam and make a move. But if you go five yards, you have to let him go and play hip to hip. And that didn't happen. So 13 seconds remaining. Waterford's going to take a timeout. We're going to keep it here. Uh, they haven't marked off the penalty yards, though. Right now, it's still second and 10. Now they're marking it off the penalty yards. And there's the strut. So that's going to take judge. it almost to the 20-yard line. That ball is going to yeah. be marked at the 21. Is that the, the what was it, the brick, brick cone? Uh, what was the color of that zone that we talked about, 25 to 20? Magenta? Oh, the, 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 the magenta zone. <laughs> the magenta zone. <laughs> magenta zone just outside the right. Yeah, definitely in the magenta zone right now. <laughs> now, here's interesting. 13 seconds remaining. You probably have time for two plays. Mm -hmm. Waterford has called two timeouts, so I think they've got one left. Well, they're in their favorite position. You know, they love that trips. They do have one timeout left. Yep. So Waterford's got one timeout left, 13 seconds. you got enough time for two plays. Higgins is going to throw. Turner on the blitz. Higgins throws towards the end zone, and it's incomplete, knocked away by Peltier. And it's going to bring up second down, but with seven seconds left, I think this is probably all they have left time for one last play. That was a good play for the defense. They realized the one-to-one -one matchup as they had three uh, trips formation to the uh, wide side of the field. And, you know, he definitely just looked and threw, threw over there. So he just jumped under it and batted the ball down. It was a very simple play for the defense. It would be nice to see some kind of option play between those special players for Waterford, something that they can really cause the defense to be committed to their techniques because right now Griswold's just flying to the ball. Waterford's going to call its final timeout with seven seconds remaining, 27-13 Griswold. Waterford has it second down and 10, but with only seven seconds remaining, we have time probably for one last play here in the first half. Mm -hmm. And now you want to see the cheerleaders moving around. Just give them a little cotton-eyed Joe. There they go. I'll tell you, how many Energizer batteries are inside these children where they're hopping up and down with this beautiful energy? It's funny, they I'll all know the cotton-eyed Joe. They do. They do. Since youth football, you know. Sometimes I announce the youth football games, you put these songs on. Those kids, no matter where they're at, they could be on the field, by the stands, eating a hot dog. They start moving their hips, jumping up and down. Great tradition here at Waterford. I'll tell you, the, the stand's packed tonight. It's really good. Beautiful night, beautiful weather. Senior night here at Waterford High School. Yeah. So you had the... Band members are dancing too. You had the senior band. You had Rocking the senior the cheerleaders. Saxophone. You had the senior football players all announced before the game. Yeah. Even the uh, opposite side, you see the cheerleaders for Griswold doing their dance routine. <laughs> 
I don't know. I never really don't know this dance routine. You know, you just, I'm more like the tap, electric slide. It tap, you know, it's a tap hip. You more of the electric slide, twist. or you more of the cha-cha slide? I, well, I could do the cha-cha slide, but actually, with my sciatic nerve, I have to check it out this year. You know, I'm going to a wedding, so I'll see how, how it goes. I'll let you know. Last play of the half, most likely. Higgins, pressured, rolls right, rolling, rolling, stepping up, throwing across his body into the end zone, and it's intercepted in the end zone as time expires. Intercepted by Aiden Cutter, and that'll take us to the half. 27-13 Griswold at the half. Stay tuned at the half for features on Quinn Speller, Kincaid Rubino, the great eight, and then come on back for three pounds of pasta. You're watching game day live on theday.com. Hines rolls right, has a man in the end zone, it's Speller, touchdown Lancer! Definitely dealt with a lot of injuries. Didn't really get to play much my sophomore year, and then ACL tear my junior year, and then uh, fully healthy senior year, and just been trying to do my best. All night long, Hines has been trying to get the ball into Quinn Speller's hands. This time he does. Is there a point this year during football where you kind of thought to yourself, yeah, I'm good, like I'm, I'm back back? <laughs> Yeah, probably probably after the Stonington game, had a pretty good game. And yeah, it was probably my realization that I was back, probably back to myself. You know, he's a, he's a very electric player. Um, he can he can do a lot in the football field. You know, he's quite he's got the speed, he's got the agility for it, he's got the hands, he he's got the running ability, he's got the vision. So he, he's tough to plan for it and he can do a lot in the football field. We try to put him in different positions. We try to get him in just openings, open field a lot of the time so that he can just kind of do his stuff, give him the ball as much as we can is one of our things, and um, let him kind of take over from there. What makes him such a good special team player? He's got great vision. When he gets the ball, he's going to make a play. And the minute he, he accelerates and hits his speed and finds a hole, a little seam, that's all he needs, he's going to make a play, and he's going to go, and he's tough to tackle. So he's got a, he's a, you know, from a family of athletes, football family. You see that with him? Yes, yes. He's got just stuff that you – you haven't had to coach for that he does and he brings that you can just tell he's been around the game he knows the little tricks of even receiving um, just getting the ball um, even in coverage and um, just little things that you know as a coach we haven't necessarily gone over but he's got that extra that next level stuff that he's that he's working on what does your dad share with you about his time uh, definitely always telling me how good he was he's I don't know he kind of taught me everything he was always doing drills at the field with him Always just playing around with him, throwing the football, whatever it was. Uh, my brothers playing playing backyard football with them, throwing me around a little bit, but definitely toughening me up a little bit. Hey, feel me, feel me, I think one, two, three. Hey, wait. Kincaid does everything for us. He kicks, he plays running back, he plays receiver, he plays uh, defensive back. He played a little little pseudo linebacker this year. He plays everything for us. Ready, begin. One, two, three. One, two, three. Yeah, I play a lot. Um, I play wide receiver, running back, slot, defensive back, punter, kicker. Here we go. You name it, I kind of play it. Right on the left. Right on the right. He could play anywhere. I mean, he's just that. He's just that. He's that good at everything. You know, whether it's running the ball or catch, catching the ball, he has great hands. And um, as a D-back, he's, he's really good. Even though he's not exceptionally tall, you know, he can cover taller receivers just because he gets up. He has, some, he has some ups. It's definitely tough playing all those positions because you don't get many breaks. But, I mean, I like to do what I can for the team to, like, help the team the most. So, I mean, I love playing all these positions. It, new experiences every day. So, yeah. If you go back... Um, three years ago, we had a bunch of freshmen started. We had a bunch of sophomores starting. We were, we were essentially a JV Froshmore team that year. And uh, those kids have now grown up into the juniors and seniors that we now have. And so, you know, it's been a, a long process, two years, three, this is the third year. And, but, you know, we've gotten better over the course of time and you just got to be patient with it. Freshman year obviously got canceled because of COVID. That I thought we were going to be all right if we got to pads, but I don't know how the season was going to go because our season got canceled. Sophomore year, we went three and seven. I felt like we had a good team, but you know we didn't win the games that we should have, and 
We had some unfortunate losses. Junior year, we kind of bounced back. You know, we were still young, but we had a lot of good linemen like Danny Sims, and, you know, we kind of just went game by game. And, I mean, we finished the season, I'm pretty sure, with a four-game win streak. It went six and four. So, yeah, senior year, definitely got a great start, great group of kids, you know, try to do everything that we can. And I feel like this is definitely going to be our best year. It's time for Game Day's Grade 8 Plays of the Week. At number 8, Kanone Oharu. Lime, old lime, girls soccer versus Valley with the rainbow goal. 2-1 win for the Wildcats. At number 7, Francisco Alvarado, Wyndham freshman quarterback. Takes off against Waterford, and well, let me make you miss right here. And whoop, let me go there, and oh, drag you into the end zone. Touchdown, whip its win, 27-7. What do you do when it's third and long? You hand it to Kincaid Rabino. Griswold football speed, stiff arm, and off we go into the wild blue yonder. Touchdown, Griswold. Hey, let's bend it like Fabry. That's the name of the new movie, because that is sick. Bends it from the touchline, first of her two goals. Griffin Chapel, NFA Boys Soccer versus Bacon Academy, down to one. 19 seconds left, and a missile on the free kick. Well, how about Trent Pichy? Free kick? How about the PK save? Stud time for Killingly. On a rainy Saturday afternoon, Bacon Academy played Montville in the Mud Bowl. And he shall be crowned king, Jace King. Opening kickoff, and he gone. Soon they were called the studs in the mud. 61-0 Bobcats. But at number one, Rosie Turbot. Lyman Hall girls soccer free kick 60 yards away. I can't reach, so let me use the bounce. Oh, how'd that get into the net? Those are our grade A. Submit your clips, and maybe you can make next week's. Championship hardware on the line Thursday afternoon at the Norwich Golf Course. Six-time champions East Lime looking to defend their ECC cross-country title. Plenty of talented runners in the field looking to dethrone the Vikings. We are from St. Bernard's, and no one can be prouder. And if you cannot hear us, we'll shout a little louder. Beautiful sunny afternoon in Norwich with a light breeze. Last year's individual champ, Waterford Junior Avery May is out to the front of the path at the start, along with Lyman Memorial Senior Hazel DeLucia, who finished fifth last year. Fall colors starting to pop out on the golf course and four minutes in. Looks like it's shaping up to be a two-person race with DeLucia and Mays already putting considerable distance on the field. I was just really happy to be here. Um, I was really sick last year, so this just felt like a redemption race, and I knew I had to get out fast, and my, I just really was going to get out and see what I could do, and just kind of redeem myself from last year. At the six minute mark, DeLucia makes her move, heading up the notorious long hill on the golf course's fourth fairway starting to put some separation between herself and Mays. I did so many hills this summer, <laughs> simply just to prepare for this race. Long hills, short hills, I just, I needed to be ready because this hill ate me up last year and I was gonna be ready for that this year. <laughs> Those hill workouts seem to have paid off as Delucia charges up one of the last inclines on the course, well ahead of the rest of the field. Delucia coming down the stretch all by herself to the finish line. When you crossed the finish line, it looked like you were a little over, overcome. Is that right or, or, or not? Um, like I said, I was sick last year and um, I just, to prove to myself that I could do this, um, it just, it felt really, really good. Waiting at the finish line was mom, Stephanie Johnson Delucia. The class double L champion in 1992 and a member of NFA's 1995 New England championship team, but who never won the ECC title. My mom was one of the most amazing runners I've ever known. Um, I'm so lucky that she's my mom, and I thank, I thank her every day for all the advice she gives me. 
Um, she was just, it doesn't matter if she, if she won ECCs or not, she was the best runner I've ever met. Mays finished second. Great job, Arthur, great job. Stonington's Peyton Vanderstreet took third. Ledyard's Ella Stevenson finished sixth with teammates Kate Littler in ninth and Josephine Withbrow in tenth, clinching the Colonel's first team title since 1989. I came into it um, knowing we were the str stronger team, um, but actually having to, you know, everybody's got to, you know, everybody's got to do their job on race day and everybody's got to have a good day and, you know, anything can happen during a race and you can only control what you can control. Um, so I was nervous, of course, and everybody else was, but I knew we could do it, and we did. 109 runners lining up for the ECC Boys Cross Country Championship Thursday at the Norwich Golf Course. And with last year's two top finishers graduating, we were guaranteed a new individual champ. East Lyme, the favorites to win their sixth straight team title, but their top returning runner, Last year's third place finisher, Sean McCauley, was a question mark after missing time with an ankle injury. He ran two races early on and they were pretty conservative and then he had the, uh, the Achilles, which, you know, it wasn't anything super major, but we're always going to be cautious with that. Um, and so he just started training again about, you know, maybe 10 days ago, 12 days ago and like really training. Early on, McCauley, part of a three-person lead pack, along with Woodstock Academy's Christian Menounos and Griswold's Tyson LaBelle. I knew it would be a very fast race because it's Christian and Tyson, very, very talented people. And going into this race, I had no idea like what my plan was. I was just going to base it off of uh, like who did what and like who started out fast, who didn't. He's probably the most talented distance runner I've ever coached and he just loves it and you know I think he just he has a tremendous amount of trust in himself and in the program so I think that you know that kind of shown through today. That leading trio staying tightly grouped through the first two miles waiting to see who would try to make a move first. And up the hill and into the home stretch it was McCauley deciding to go for it. I was just trying to wait just keep waiting and waiting until I thought it was the right time to go. And I went, and once you go like that, you can't turn back. You can't, you, like, like, you just got to go, you know? So that's what I did. Um, I just tried to uh, just finish strong. McCauley was first across the line, one of five East Line runners in the top ten, leaving no doubt about the team championship, the sixth straight for the Vikings. Three years ago when Luke Anthony was a senior, there was a huge shift in the program of these kids that they wanted to be runners. They didn't want to just do this as an after school activity. You know, they wanted to run in college and they wanted to run post collegiately and they, they wanted to learn about, you know, workouts and training. And, and I think when you put that mindset together with a group that's obviously very talented, you can have a lot of fun. All right, we're at halftime, 27-13 Griswold. It's time for the best segment in all of high school sports, three pounds of pasta, where I ask Pasta Santa Bria three questions <laughs> related to anything or nothing at all, and we get his unique opinions. Let's start with per pound one. We have the great Waterford band over yeah. here to our right, and they are playing songs throughout the course of the game. What song from the band sticks with you from your playing days, either oh. high school or college, that, that you can't let go, and no matter what they're playing, you know you want to dance to that song. Okay, I'm going to tell you a funny story. Chucky McLaughlin was like my mentor, and he played back in New London, and one of the things that I enjoyed was we played on Saturdays, so after our game, we would go and watch college football, and I loved the UC, uh, USC Trojans, that dun, 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 dun. It was just so military, but at the same time passionate, so one time I didn't know what the name was, and I was trying to tell Chucky, Chucky, it goes like this, he was like, yo, say it, but don't spray it. Man, and he, that's when I got that whole USC mentality every time. Yeah, it was fun. But no matter when I hear this song. Dun, 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 oh, that's right. That's right. Go Whalers, go. That's right. That no was matter high what, school classic. No matter what. You I, can hear it. You I can, can hear it in college, and I'm going, yeah. go Whalers, go. Go it's Whalers, a, go. All right. That's, that's great. That's your first pound of pasta. Pound two, where it's almost Halloween. Deuce. It's almost Halloween, which means that if every channel of every TV has scary movies on, 
Who is the scariest horror movie person in uh, your mind? Okay, I was young when this happened in New York City, and we had a little family gathering, and we used to always go to the apartments that had the movies. Back then it was Channel 5, you know, that monster theater show. And the first time I saw Jason Voorhees come out the lake and grab the girl, I booked it from the second floor to the sixth floor in probably Usain Bolt time. I still, to this day, am afraid of Jason Voorhees. Now, I know there's a lot of people, the new people, you know, they got your jigsaws and your people like that, you know. And, and, and of course, for me, you know, there's no one scarier than Linda Blair and The oh. Exorcist with the head spinning around. Yeah, yeah. But I'm with you, Michael Myers, Jason. But for me, for whatever reason, Freddy Krueger and his Ooh. ability to get in my dreams, man. Yeah. Was Couldn't as, sleep. Oh, Couldn't sleep for a couple I did not weeks, right? sleep for a long time. But I'll tell you a quick story. That's why I got my sleep apnea. I'll tell you a quick story. I went to see Halloween yeah. uh, with Jack Cochran, the aforementioned Jack, and Dan Vendetta <laughs> yep. uh, at the big drive-in that used to be near yep. Stop and Shop in That's Waterford. Right. Yep. We may have snuck in. Uh, <laughs> and on the we had to walk back home on Coleman Street. Yep. And they kept taking off. And running like I, they were 18, I was 13. Yeah. They would run off and hide behind trees and jump out at me yeah. on the way home. I never slept and sleep another week. Listen, I never, I never really enjoyed Halloween in New London. You always get caught with jokes out there. <laughs> if you were around the block, expect somebody to scare you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next is your third pound of pasta. The best bowl of and the day. And this is the one where at the end we're going to bring Peter in for the little added uh, dollop of syrupy uh, goodness on this one. So it is the end of October. Mm hmm. Uh, beautiful night, football on right Great now. Night. But if you were to go home right now, you could turn on hockey. Yep. You could turn on basketball. Starting already. You could turn on baseball. Great time. Right now, there are four major sports all playing at the mm -hmm. same time. So the question I have for you is, what is the best season for sports and why? Well, I do love autumn because it brings all the major sports together. And, you know, seeing the beginning of basketball, it just tells you, you know, really, we're fresh into something new. And, and then the midway of the football season, knowing that these teams have been battling and we're finding out where they're going to stand. But to me, I love the World Series mentality. Baseball has a magical essence when it comes to October. And as you know, this, this series, we would not never expect that these two teams would probably be there. But the magic and the play and the contention, because they're playing at their best at the right time, is what I feel like this is the season where we see all those potentials out there. So I, I, I used, too. So I used to agree with you, March is now my favorite, and I'll tell you why. Uh, I used to love October, right? You have the, the World Series, and you had hockey and basketball starting, and football was right in the mix. And yep. I, but as I've gotten older, I've come to realize that October means death. Yeah. That <laughs> the death of the baseball season, yeah. the death of nice weather, uh, and to right. quote Game of Thrones, Winter is coming. Winter Asta. is coming. So yep. now I am about March madness. You were I'm about baby now. I'm about rebirth. That's I'm right. about the start of the baseball season. Hockey's still going. Yep. Basketball still going. Yep. And I know there's no football, but I don't care because yep. it's there's, rebirth. There's the draft. The <laughs> weather is coming forward. Exactly. So I'm a March man. I Peter, like that. Peter Wapping. What is the best season for sports? So Along similar lines to you, I'm, I was just going to push it a couple months ahead to, to May, and this was true when I was a kid, and it wasn't true for a while, but it's, I think it's true again now. But I, I have great childhood memories of May because the Celtics are in the playoffs. Yeah. The Bruins are in the playoffs. That's You're right. seeing those rivalry series, yeah. and you can pretend that the Red Sox have a chance. That's yeah. a good call. Good I was in Arizona last year. For both the Celtics and the Bruins, and there was as it was as and the Red Sox. Yeah. It's a great trio, I think, here in New England, Peter, mm -hmm. for certain. May, because because with me in March, it's still cold and yucky. Yeah. May, you've turned the corner. There was a time where you know you had all these sports in one week. It was like an extravaganza, setting up over one to the next because of the sports and the series that were all involved. So. Yeah, man. You know, that, that's a good point there, Pete. We actually pulled off a Boston triple header weekend uh, a couple of years ago. And it was super fun. Red Sox, Celtics, and Bruins? I think, you know what? I think it was a fall triple header, so I think it was Patriots. Patriots. And if you count the revolution, you know, you can yeah, mix in that too if you're a soccer out. fan. Absolutely. So uh, here comes the little bit. Here's our little uh, our little dab of Bolognese at the end. Parmigiano here Peter. Romano. What is the most overrated season here in Connecticut, or for Peter, in New England, since Peter's a New England guy. Summer. Summer, yeah. I would say summer. 
It's when you have all these AAU here and there that are just taking kids away from just playing in the park, you know, building up relationships that will recreate some kind of culture in their own program. So, yeah, it, it, it's summer's more like I'm trying to stay away from being outside because of the, the heat, and I, I like to enjoy myself, you know, watching programs inside. And it's just, it's always humid. It's, it's never, we, we have so few, like, pleasant summer days. We get a, I feel like we get a great, like, week and a half of spring, and then, I mean, I, I understand that, you know, we are not in, in Mississippi or, or Louisiana, and, and we don't have that much to complain about. But the humidity, brother. Woo! <laughs> uh, I think you're, I think you're both, uh, you both have valid points, but my wife would say, as she's traveled through Louisiana and Arkansas and Mississippi this all summer long, that we're crazy. The best summers in the country mm. exist here in New England. <laughs> the overrated season is spring, because I don't know what it is. I don't know what spring looks like anymore. Yeah. It's snowy, rainy, and it's 106 it degrees a week later. There's a lot of mud. <laughs> it did snow in, like, April, didn't it? <laughs> <laughs> well, here's your three pounds of pasta, awesome, as brother. always. That was great. Peter and pasta bring the heat. And as Waterford goes to kick it off, Griswold will have it here to start the second half on top 27 to 13. On Wisconsin being played yeah. by the band. There it is right Run there. the ball right through Chicago. Kick is bouncing on the turf and it comes down to Peltier and he crosses the 45 yard line where Griswold will have it first and 10 at the 46. Well again, is Waterford gonna keep the momentum that they have and you know work on it? We're gonna see this defensive series. Hopefully they'll try to find a way to stop it. Uh, the good news is coming into the ball game to start the second half is junior quarterback Luke Cassidy. That's good to see. He was Definitely. off the field for the last series uh, after suffering uh, an injury that is clearly unaffecting him now, and mm -hmm. he is back onto the field. Uh, nothing against the outstanding play of Colby Mills, who threw a touchdown yeah, pass step it up, that young man, huh? <laughs> in his absence. So Cassidy... Under center to start half number two. First down, he hands it off to Rabino, who has a big hole. Kincaid Rabino, stiff arm, but the ball is loose. The ball is loose. The Lancers recover. This is the momentum that they need right now. Great job. He was wrapping up, and again, we we're talking about wrap up and grab cloth. That defender wrapped up, grab cloth, and then he punched on that uppercut to the elbow that caused that bubble, to, uh, the fall. Uh, the football to come pop out. Reese Tickner on the recovery for great. Waterford, and that's exactly what the Lancers needed. Rubino had a huge gain and yeah. was thinking. Off to the races. Yeah, he was thinking I was going to go, you know, take this to the house. I wanted another great eight. <laughs> and Tickner with the punch out recovery, Lancers. So let's see what they do with it. Ball at their own 42 yard line. They got a full tank of momentum now. Keeper Higgins, and he's wrestled to the ground by McFeet after a gain of a one. Tell you, that must be confusing for Griswold right now. They're kind of stunned from what just happened, but the defense again just locked in and made a play. Yeah, Rabino, who is so dynamic and rarely puts the ball on the turf, that was a clear indication of the reverse punch. You, know, yep. you don't see that coming. You think you're past that guy, the guy from behind you. Jet sweep. It goes to Spencer. And Spencer slides after a gain of four. He'll be at the 48-yard line. It'll bring up third and six. You know, if I was a coach for Griswold, this would be a, t a good testament to teach the team how do we face adversity when there's, you know, a change in the, in, the, in the play there. So if this defense can step it up and do a three and out, that'll help them out down the road when they play with some tough competitive teams and getting into the playoffs. If uh, Griswold holds on and Stonington takes care of business tonight, next week's Griswold-Stonington game will be uh, the game of the year as far as playoff implications mm -hmm. are concerned. <laughs> Higgins on third down. Rolls to his right, looking to throw in the flat. Off the hands of Spencer, and that would have been a first down. Instead, it's going to be fourth down, and we'll see if... Waterford goes for it, it's fourth and six. Next week, of course, is championship week in the ECC. We will have the 
Girls Soccer Championships live from Montville on Wednesday. We will have the Boys Soccer Championships live from Ledger on Thursday. And we will have the Volleyball Championships live from New London on Friday. And the swimming highlights Ooh. on Saturday. We got them all packed, brother. Fourth and six, Waterford will go. Speller, the motion man, and Higgins to throw. In the flat, breaks a tackle as Sutman, first down. Brady Sutman down the middle of the field, down the hash, showing speed, heading to the end zone. Touchdown, Woo! Lancers, big play, Brady Sutman for six. The full moon is rising for the Lancers on that one. That was a great play. Almost an interception, but he stayed focused on the catch. And then he was on a breakaway, a good running angle. Sometimes the receivers, when they start to run, just try to work vertical. He knew the safety was in an angle, and he fought and beat that angle and got into the end zone really quick, really quick. A dangerous pass and a fabulous Ooh. result. Sutman breaks a tackle and then shows hash speed yeah. right down the hash. We got a ball game today. The snap. Good hold is good, kick is through and true. And how about the Lancers have cut it to seven. It's 27-20. We'll be back with more action. You're watching game day live on day.com. After the game, follow Game Day CT on social media to see our pick for the Scient Federal Credit Union top play. Pave the way for your students' financial success with a MySci account from Scient Federal Credit Union. Open a high yield MySci savings account today and Help support a positive financial future for your student. Visit scientefcu.org to learn more. An improbable start to the second mm. half as the Lancer defense forces a turnover and on a fourth down, a big play. Brady Sutman for six and the Lancers are within seven, 27-20. We're gonna bring in Peter Wappi for our out of town scoreboard. Peter, what's going on elsewhere? We got Killingly leading East Lyme, 28-21. And Fitch over Hillhouse, 30-7. Wow. That's good. You don't have any U12 soccer scores, do you? As, as a matter of fact, I do. My U12 Waterford girls with a 3-2 win over Ledger tonight to remain undefeated. I mean, yep. I, that's, right. that, that's the one I was looking for. Yeah, you called it out, man. You're like a guru of knowing things. <laughs> Punch kick taken by Griswold and right to the ground. Rubino, excuse me, that was, that was number 14, uh, Brandon Hopkins, and will set up shop at the 35-yard line where Griswold just took a took a punch. Yeah, they took, took a, a punch across punch, the yeah. chin, so let's see what they got. And dropped. an uppercut, and that turned the tables there. You can see the momentum. You said Waterford's yeah. a momentum team. I'll tell you, I was very, I was an emotional guy when it came to coaching defense and that, how that really helps the players just focus and and build on that energy and become a brotherhood. That sometimes, you know, and I, Jack used to say it when they were good, he would just say one word, fly around. He gave them the opportunity for, for them to play, and it seems like Waterford's holding down with that. Right back to Rubino, big hole. Rubino fighting for yardage. Cleaned up by Powers and Barnhill at the 40-yard line, but it'll be a seven-yard gain for Kincaid Rubino. You know, you should write a book and be like the Book of Answers, Volume C. <laughs> you know, you come up with some great stuff. I'm gonna have to call you when I sit back and be like, yeah, I got these hot dogs here. I was wondering if I should toast them. Toast <laughs> the buns, boil the hot dogs. That's what's up. I'm with that. I do love, gr I love grilling a hot dog, but I have to admit, there's something about the steamed yes, hot dog. Yes, the steamed hot, like in New York City, like a snapper. Yeah, you know? yeah. Little mustard, no ketchup. Classic. Guess where I'm going after this. Yeah. <laughs> Turner gets it, fighting for yardage, but he's not going to get much. Back to the line of scrimmage. Could be third and two. That was a great job by the Waterford defensive line. What they did was they actually plugged the gap and then got under the lineman and lifted him up, and that just neutralized the energy that the, the uh, Wolverines were trying to do to get that first down. There are moments in history uh, where you know love is formed. You mentioned the hot dogs. Might not. My wife and I were first dating. My wife's from Brooklyn, New York. Brooklyn. All and right. she grew up in a. In a Latin with a Latino, you know, household next mm -hmm. door and friends. 
And early in our relationship, she said, I love Baclayitos. Do you know what Baclayitos oh, are? And I'm like, baclayitos, I'm like, of course oh. I do. And she looked at me and she went, you do? Yeah. In motion, Rubino, toss out to Turner. Turner with a head of steam has a first down out of bounds at the mid around midfield. Yeah. For those families that don't know what bacalaito is, it's actually a uh, you know vegetable codfish kind of batter that you put in the frying pan with some good grease and let it cook and turns into like a fritter, mm -hmm. so to speak. So and yeah. She said she'd love the street fairs where she could get them on a stick, bacalaitos right on, on a stick. stick. Yep. And I'm like, of course I know what that is. And she looked at me and she goes, How do you know what that is? I'm like, <laughs> from New London. London. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not you know I know not all ocean, it's not all ocean beach and the whale tail, you know. Right. I got some you know I got some friends. Oh, we know the block. <laughs> and, uh, and in that moment, she loved me just a little bit more. Hey, you know what? And you have that swagger look <laughs> there, that charm. It's kind of how I felt when she said, yeah, I, I think Jim Kelly's my favorite quarterback, but I really do like Warren Moon, too. Ooh. Yeah. Montigny with the handoff, cuts it inside. Waterford defends it well, but Montigny reverses field. He's gone. And Kyle Montigny is off to the races. He fast. Touchdown, Griswold. Woo. Like a surfer in a wave, he just shot right through the gap and did a nice cut back, and boy, that was a great run. Way to return the, the energy back to the Wolverines right now. And it quiets the yeah. Waterford faithful. Montigny, that play was designed to go outside. Yep. It was well defended by Waterford. Montigny cut it back the other way, and yeah. once he got back across the to the right side, yep. of, and there was no one there. Just a little bit of an over pursuit by the safety, and you know, understandably so that they're knowing they're trying to work downhill. And again, you know, got to be disciplined. You scrape inside to outside and wait for that cutback to come. And they, they weren't there. And they are, Griswold's going to go for two. Boy, the silence of everyone in that play. Hands off to Rubino, and he's going to be stopped short. Well defended by Waterford. He's going to stop him short. Looks like. Coming off it for Waterford is Devin Powers. Mm -hmm. He is always around the football for the Lancers. And with 8-11 remaining, it's 33-20. to Griswold on top, and Waterford will have the football. We'll take a quick break. You're watching Game Day Live on theday.com. Game Day is a production of The Day Publishing Company. If you'd like to support Game Day and help us continue to bring you the best in Connecticut high school sports, please consider purchasing a print or digital subscription to The Day at theday.com slash subscribe. Game Day is brought to you by Water for Dental Health. All that's good begins with a smile, and our entire team's dedicated to providing you the personalized dental care you deserve. So part of the commitment to serving our patients includes providing information that helps them make more informed decisions about their oral health needs. So go to waterfordentalhealth.com. This website's a resource, and we hope you find it interesting and useful. Waterfordentalhealth.com. 33-20. Griswold on top after a brilliant run from Kyle Montigny, and Waterford now took a punch back on the chin and let's see how they respond getting the football back down two scores big hop over Spencer and Bumgarner will go over and fall on it but a, wow, a tough lucky bounce right there. there from yeah. Griswold Waterford could have had the ball around the 30 and they're all the way down now I believe at the 10 a little over the 10 right now. All right, this is how you know you've made the big time. When your volleyball color person, Madison Canestreri, <laughs> texts you during a football game to let you know that Costco sells more hot dogs yearly oh. than every Major League Baseball stadium combined. Oh, I love Maddie. She was part of the track team, an amazing young athlete. God bless her. That's all right. That's that's your counterpart yeah. for volleyball. She teaches me oh, more about volleyball than she is. Great. Oh my goodness! And I now teaching me about hot dogs. I learned about iced coffee from her. Hand off to Sutman up the middle, gain of four on first down. She Peter, did you know about Costco selling more hot dogs than all the Major League Baseball stadiums combined? I just saw that piece of trivia like a week ago, so I'm wondering <laughs> if, if Madison and I are on the same social media feed. <laughs> Spencer. Gain of perhaps three. That'll bring up third down, a big third down coming up here for Waterford. Uh, you know, that's 32 Major League Baseball teams selling a lot of hot dogs, and yet Costco, Costco sells more. You know why? Because Costco is cheaper. You know, a hot dog in a baseball game is like, you know, what, 30 decades? <laughs> uh, there's a nice hard count from Waterford. They get Griswold to jump. That'll 
give him a first down. That is a good a good stat for Costco, right? They picked on the freshman. Kamani Boyce, the freshman, jumped that time for Griswold. They and said, listen, you might be another, six feet and 225. Another episode of the hard counts. Well, you say, listen, you might be six feet, 225 yeah. as a freshman. Yeah. We know you're going to be an absolute monster, but you know what? You're a freshman. That's right. You're, you're rambunctious. You're impulsive, and we're going to draw you off. On two. On two. <laughs> First down, Lancers. Speller in motion across the formation. Higgins hands off to Sutman. Flag down. Sutman gains three. We'll see what the flag is. So my son was saying the other day in practice they were they were running play and the quarterback goes in the huddle and he goes, we're going to do this one on down, on yep, down, on right? Down. On down. They get up to the line of scrimmage and the right tackle, the right guard rather, says to him, what are we doing on? On one. He, <laughs> goes, he goes, on down. And the right tackle goes, on down? Yep. He goes, on down. <laughs> quarterback goes, down! A.J. hikes the ball, yep. hits the quarterback in the hands, drops to the ground. And he goes, mm. what are you doing, A.J.? And he goes, it was supposed to be on down. He goes, it was? Yeah, imagine I mean, He goes, you're the quarterback. You're 30 seconds ago. You told me it was on down. I love A.J. because that happened to me with Todd Yuko. God bless him. Todd would help me out when we call a big play. I would be always worried about it. I'll talk about it right after this play. <laughs> First and 15. Hand off. Sutman. Has a seam, bounces it in almost all the way to the first down marker, but he does cross the 30. That'll get all of it back and then some. It's going to be short for Waterford, but we have an injured player on the turf. So while they attend to the injured player, we're going to take a break. 33-20 Grizzled, you're watching Game Day Live on the day.com. Being part of a great community is so important. People helping and supporting others can be very uplifting and contagious. At Philomena's Restaurant, that's exactly what you get. It's the community hub for not just Waterford, but all of southeastern Connecticut. Birthday parties, anniversary dinners, weddings, sports banquets, a drink with friends, and of course, charity events. Philomena's has been, is, and will always be there for the community. Celebrate and support southeastern Connecticut at Philomena's. Philomena's, Utopia Plaza in Waterford. Waterford. <laughs> All right, an extended version of three pounds of pasta. We're Wouldn't going on pound it. number five. You because, will not believe it, America. <laughs> uh, we just got asked the following question. What sells more, the hot dogs at Costco, which is more than all 32 Major League Baseball teams sell combined, mm -hmm. or the little meatballs, which you don't have to call Swedish meatballs because they're sold at Ikea, which automatically makes them Swedish meatballs. That's right. The answer after this play, second and short. Spencer gets the handoff, and he is going to get back only to the line of scrimmage. It'll be third and a yard. <laughs> so the answer, Peter Wappi, you know, only only because your last name is is Wappi, and you have that rich Scandinavian tradition. Give it to what, us, what, What's the answer? So the number of hot dogs at Costco is 135 million per year. IKEA sells one billion meatballs Woo! annually. They're right there with Legos. <laughs> Delayed handoff. And I think it's going to be short. They're going to be, it's going to be fourth down here for Waterford. I don't think he got back. And we're going to get a flag on the play. The handoff was to Powers. And there was a little bit of extra curricular. So we'll see what the flag is. A little frustration there. Flag is a against Griswold. And that's going to move the chains for Waterford. Definitely so, Peter, are they that. counting each meatball? Because in fairness, one hot dog from Costco is like five of those meatballs from really? Ikea. Five? Oh, you know me. They're big those hot dogs, yeah. Big hot dogs, little yeah. meatballs. Yeah. So I'm just wondering if they're counting each meatball. Then I'm saying, you know. They should go by the weight. <laughs> it, it, but it's still, it's still like an <laughs> incredible. So they are counting each meatball, but we're s you're still talking like – Almost a thousand uh, uh, times more. Yeah, a thousand times more. That is yeah. disturbing on so many levels that America eats that many hot dogs and meatballs. Just letting what you know. What state? Well, and, and to be fair, yeah. we're talking worldwide meatballs. Oh, oh, that's versus Costco, which is an American company. All right. First down. A little inside trap. Stevens. Spencer, excuse me. Parker Spencer. <laughs> I was gain of seven. I'm... Still with the meatballs, I'm, I'm, right? I'm doing math in my head for meatballs worldwide. Guess what I'm going to make tonight? Meatballs? Meatball grinder. With I'm going with that with a little marinara sauce and some oh, was it, uh, provolone. Higgins throws it out. Here's Speller. Big play. Speller first down. Crosses the 
35 yard line, Waterford's in business with five minutes ticking remaining here in the third period. Let me pull a little Casey here. Spellers causing spells on a full moon night. What do you think? As we head towards Halloween, absolutely. <laughs> Spencer on the carry and brilliantly defended by Griswold. Coming up was Sam Martin to make the tackle, loss of four. Yeah, that was definitely a good read by him, seeing the jet play. That jet play's been tough because those outside linebackers are pretty much unblocked. He's to pass them and, and get to the next level. So second and 13 on the play as the clock winds with 4.20 remaining. Griswold with a two-score lead, but I promise you this game is more competitive than I think Griswold anticipated. And I think Waterford right now uh, is starting to feel a little bit more like the team that Coach Nolda wants them to be. Higgins rolls, throws, complete. It's gonna be short of the first down, but enough to get a third and manageable as Westcott went up to get it and got him inside the Penalty and loss yardage, so now it's going to be third and eight. And Waterford's going to move quickly. With a NASCAR call right there, huh? <laughs> Joey Logano. There you go. Perfect. Middletown, Connecticut. Pressured. Higgins, middle screen. And buried. What a great tackle in the middle of the field. <laughs> McFeet. That young man reminded me of what, like, people talk about Warren Sapp and why was he a Hall of Famer. Things like that. He read that screen. He dropped his hips turn it. It's a little drill that Jack used to do with a lot of defensive linemen. They would run and touch the barrel and then run right back. And that repetitive technique really stopped those jailbreak screens, those middle screens that were brought to you uh, from Waterford. Speaking of which, going back to uh, my days of playing center, I he used to pat my thigh to let me know what down it was because I was always forgetful. That was a <laughs> true story. Saved me from a lot of hill drills. Higgins rolling right. Back across the middle of the field. Incomplete. And Griswold will hold, and they'll take over at their own 32-yard line. And then the secret part to that was when there was a no-sound play, where sometimes we just would go with no sound as everybody was worried about New London's kind of uh, cadence back in the day, he would actually just, like, bump the top of my back, and that was a no-call, uh, you know, no-sound, a quick play there. I, I do love some of the stories. You know, he's, like, he's like, I understand that the linemen forget. He's like, but it's like... Five seconds ago. Yeah. <laughs> like, how do you it, think but that that fast. You know, you have to go out there, call the front, call the blocking scheme, call the backup play of anything. Yeah, it, it adds up. Hand off. Rabino. Rabino bounces outside, and he'll have a first down crossing the 40-yard line as Griswold with a two-touchdown lead, very content to grind some clock with Rabino. Uh, this era's football now. You have in college your basic play call, your backup play, your kill call play, and your automatic adjustable call play. And I saw a video with uh, the uh, the Manning brothers trying to do that, and <laughs> Eli got onto Peyton's head. He was so upset he took the helmet off. <laughs> First and 10, ball at the 41-yard line. Cassidy. Shuttle for Montigny. Montigny gets the handoff right up the middle. Puts his head down. Breaks outside. Now it's a foot race. There goes we Kyle go. Montigny crossing the 20. Touchdown, Griswold. Kyle Montigny, you're not catching him. What a play. He flew by there, definitely. You know, the lineman just kept on blocking to the next level, and then they just kept on going. No one really touched him, actually, in that play. He I just burst it right out the gap. I said in one of our early grade eights, Kyle Montigny makes fast people look not fast. Yeah. He, I mean, he, he is off. a jet. Got some future track stars over here. I'm have to. And that's the danger of those two wings, Montigny mm -hmm. and Rubino. They are a gap away from taking it on every play. They're going to go for two again, up 19, 39 20. There goes Rubino. Cassidy rolls. Cassidy is in the grasp, and that is going to be it for Luke Cassidy as he goes down. And it's 39-20 with just under two minutes remaining in the third period. We'll be right back. You're watching Game Day Live on theday.com. Well, as we head into a brand new season on Game Day, we want something brand new to come to all of you as well. Game Day launching its merchandise store for the first time. Now, as you know, greatness has no off-season, 
and game day has no off season either. We're always working to provide you the best we can do, and that includes great merch. So come on into the merchandise store for game day. As the season progresses, who knows who's going to say what that'll make it on to the next game day t-shirt. Find out in the merch store. Waterford had gotten close within a touchdown, and then on back-to-back -to -back, uh, touchdowns, Kyle Montigny showed mm. why he is one of the most dangerous players in the conference. His teammate, Kincaid Rubino, and he have been lights out tonight Talk for about Grizzly. Jets. Man, he flew by that. Kick bounces. Taken by Bumgarner at the 25-yard line. And he'll take it up to the 27, 37-yard line, that is. And that's where Waterford will have it. Tonight starts, of course, game one of the World Series. The oh, man. 150 to one underdog Arizona Diamondbacks and yep. the 50 to one underdog Texas Rangers in a game. And I, and I am I'm usually an underdog guy, but I have to admit the fact that the Rangers have never won a World Series, they're it would be nice. two in their two appearances. I would love to see that happen. And the Diamondbacks, who did do the greatest thing of all time, which is beat the Yankees in a World mm. Series, in that their hurts. only appearance. In My their liver. only appearance. <laughs> Base hit right up the field. I remember that. Higgins. Yeah, that was Luis Gonzalez Luis off of Mariano Gonzalez. Rivera. And that was the 9-11 World Series. Yeah. That was the World Series that occurred, which was hard because, you know, a, a small piece of me yep. wanted New York, you know, to win. Because talk, but of talk about resilience and what baseball brings, you yeah. know. That was something that I loved the way New York got together to reunify America. And then, you know, you had teams like Arizona, which was a young team at the time, and sure. go out there and make such a young team a with Kurt Schilling and Randy Johnson anchoring the that big staff. unit. Two. Remember Schilling? I think was that the no that he he was he bled in a leg and win the Red Sox. Two thousand and four. Right. That's right. I love your stats. You find that out there. Higgins to throw over the middle, looking for Speller, and it's off his hands right at the first down marker, and that's one Quinn Speller wants back. He was looking to run before he had it all the way in. I got to give credit to the offense coordinator. If that's the head coach, great job. He knows right now that they're playing a 4-3, and they're only moving their linebackers for the motions and stuff like that. So that leaves digs, in routes, out routes available. And again, they just have to complete it. It looks beautiful on the field when you see it happen, but you know, the execution has to be there. Third and 11. Third and 11, ball is at the 32-yard line. Higgins to throw, pressured, throws it off his back foot, has a man, first down. And right to midfield goes Sutman, and it will, excuse me, first down, Lancers. Sutman play. all the way to midfield. <laughs> Again, they've been throwing backside to that one receiver side and uh, making plays there. Great job by Sutman, because he just flared right out. And that's a great play to just make. You can continue to do that down the field with this defense is being played. I'm going to appeal to our audience out there right now. If any of you out there happen to know an accurate Stonington Wyndham score, Woo. please feel free to send it in to our social medias at Game Day CT. We would love to know a Wyndham, or go on our broadcast and type it in the comments, a Wyndham Stonington score. Handoff, Sutman, and he's going to get a nice gain, eight yards on first down. Let's see if our brother Arnie, who was there when we were at the Stonington game can give us that feedback. Arnie, if you're out there, if you hear us, please send us that love. Second and four. Higgins to throw, zips it low, but caught by Speller. And they're saying it hit the ground, and that wow. was a great effort by Quinn Speller. It'll be third down. And it seems like Waterford right now knows where they need to go. It's just making the play happen. 10 seconds remaining here in the third period. Big third down coming up for the Lancers. Speller, excuse me, Higgins, gonna keep it himself. Has the first down, crosses the 40 to the 35 yard line where he's wrestled to the ground by Dean Menzano, but that'll move the chains. And as the end of the third quarter comes, it's 39-20, Griswold Waterford's driving. Fourth quarter action on the other side. You're watching game day, live on the day.com.
After the game, follow Game Day CT on social media to see our pick for the Scient Federal Credit Union top play. Pave the way for your students' financial success with a MySci account from Scient Federal Credit Union. Open a high-yield MySci savings account today and help support a positive financial future for your student. Visit ScientFCU.org to learn more. Through the magic of modern technology, as well as a slight case of the left hand not knowing what the right hand is doing, <laughs> our own Mike DeMauro reminds us, hey guys, I'm at that game, and I'm tweeting right now. But, you know, we got our own thing going on right here. But 12-7 yeah. Wyndham late in the first half over Stonington. Now, let's put it out there. Assuming Griswold holds on here, they will have one loss. Wyndham. If they were to hold on and win that game, yeah. would have one loss. Right. Stonington, if they lose that game, would have one, one loss. loss. So, and they're still all playing each other down the stretch as Griswold has Stonington next week. So, this is uh, good. Great storyline for the ECC, huh? These schools, very, very tough. First down, Waterford. Broken play, Higgins to throw, tipped and incomplete. Wyndham first place in class double S right now. Wyndham in first place no. in class double S and a win over Stonington would all but assure them of right. that top spot going into the a stretch of, of the season. A lot of points after this game. And Wyndham was beaten mm -hmm. two weeks ago. Bacon Academy had him beat at Wyndham and the Whippet has pulled out a fabulous late victory, 10-7 over Ooh. the Bobcats. And that Wyndham team wins ugly. Every week it's ugly, <laughs> but they win. And you watch their social media, and they're saying, hey, we just get it done. Doesn't, don't look for uh, – nope, there's no beauty pageants here, nope. but we get it done. I love Coach Pro. He's doing a great job over there. Higgins to throw. Has time. Now he steps up, and he'll be wrestled to the ground right at the line of scrimmage. It'll be third and ten with the ball at the 35-yard line. I'll tell you what they have great over there that I've seen in plenty of videos and I'm hoping that they can invite me one day is their pre-game dinners. You know, it's not just regular pasta. Sometimes you get some good Spanish food in between there. Oh, so. oh yeah, yeah. Wyndham, yeah. We, yeah, got, yeah. we got we to take a trip up there and just have that moment with them. Coach, if, you, if you're hearing us, please. I know you're in the game and winning. Oh, yeah, we're coming. Give us some love. Invite, we'll yeah, come. we got to go up there. Peter, I will say one of the best cheeseburgers I have had at any of the concession stands was at the Wyndham concession stand two weeks ago. They use adobo. Just throw oh, it now out I got to go. <laughs> it was one of the best cheeseburgers I have ever had. And I will tell you why after this. Higgins to throw on third down. Out in the flat, he throws. Has his man Speller. Speller breaks one tackle and gets right up to the first down marker. He's going to be a yard short. It'll be fourth and a yard. So they 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 make them, and they use, they use two pieces of cheese, not one. Mm. And the burgers are, are big. The buns are lightly toasted, and then they wrap them in the in the tin foil. Oh, right so up. it keeps so it them stays warm. hot. Oh, oh. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that was good stuff. Yeah, we got to take a trip to Wyndham. <laughs> nice play. Nice Westcott catch. has the first down at the 20. <laughs> Little play action, bootleg to the weak side, gets it to Westcott, and the Lancers are moving. This is what it's all about, Case. Dip and dunk the ball to your players and make them have the opportunity to make plays. Good job right now for Waterford as they're trying to just make these excellent little drop plays count. They still have plenty of time on the clock, but this will have to be moving a little bit quicker as the score still is, you know, three three series right now from what I'm seeing. As Coach Nolda said, Waterford's playing to learn more than they're even playing than anything else right now to, mm -hmm. for winnable, teachable moments. Sutman, stutter steps, cuts, senses the end zone, right down to the one yard line goes Brady Sutman. He'll be marked down at the one. It'll be first and goal, Lancers. Yeah, it seems like the Griswold energy is just kind of numb right now. They're just standing and waiting for someone to make a play while the La Lancers coming into that NASCAR. What do we got? Give me an animal one there. Cheetah. Quarterback keeper by Higgins. That'll be enough. He'll be into the end zone. Touchdown, Lancers. Jack awesome Higgins job. for six. 39-26. Griswold still on top, but the Lancers not going away. Talk about teachable. They're learning right now that they could play this game and possibly continue to be better as they progress. Looking ahead, if you're Waterford, you're at Weaver next week, a winless Weaver. Yeah. Uh, that's a game that, you know, you never 
anticipate. You never mark a victory down, but yeah. that's a game where, where, you, very where you should you should go get healthy. Yes, and definitely. you should go improve. And then they have Bacon Academy and East Lyme to round out the season. Well, those are two challenges, and you know the Thanksgiving game between them has always been tough. Kick is up. It is through and true, and with 9:55 remaining here in the ball game. Waterford cuts it to 11, 39-28. You're watching Game Day live on theday.com. Fall is here, which means it's time for Game Day's Great Eight. The best eight plays of the week submitted by you, the viewers, on any of our social media platforms. You send us the best videos from practice or the game, any sport in the fall, and we might see about putting it on the Great Eight of the week. So we were mentioning Waterford's schedule down the stretch at one and five. I mean, this one looks a little bit, you know, dicey for them. But if they, even if they went to one and six, you get healthy next week at Weaver. Yep. Uh, then comes a game with Bacon Academy. Bacon, who I think, uh, again, talking to Coach yeah. Nolda, he said uh, had great things to say about Bacon Academy, the improvement they've made. They're three and three on the year, playing yep. Ledger tomorrow. Uh, that's a game that you know. If you, both teams, if you're Waterford, you're saying, we have to win that game. Right. And if you're Bacon, you're saying, we, we have to win that game. Right. And so it's, that's a great matchup. And then they roll into Thanksgiving. And if they got a little momentum with a Weaver win and a Bacon win, yeah. and you, you roll into know. Thanksgiving and you say, you know what? Yeah. We're going to take our shot and have some fun on Thanksgiving yeah. against East Lyme. has a tough schedule, so you never know how they'll get there. If they get there healthy or if they get there battered. You know, it's going to be some good competition on Thanksgiving Day. Waterford to kick off, down two scores. Sheehan, onside kick. It's off of a Griswold it's player. Loose. It's still loose. It's anybody's ball. I think Waterford might have it. There's a battle in the bottom. And they do. And they got it, yes. And who comes out of what the pile? Quinn Speller. Woo, putting a spell on you. <laughs> Beautiful onside kick. It took the bounce that you football's need. football's mine. He said it, yeah. <laughs> and it got two things done. It got up in the air. Yep. So that it was a free ball, and it let the athlete, the basketball oh, player, the baseball sorry. player go get it. It reminded me a little bit of the rugby scrum, you know, as the guy trying to reach up to the fingertips, touching the ball, the impact of that hit. Allowed that ball to bounce back and in favorite with one of the Waterford Lancers right there diving in. But it was a big scrum. <laughs> oh, if Waterford could ever punch this one in, it would electrify this crowd. I love it. The momentum carries them, and I hope it continues. On their own 40-yard line. Excuse me. On the Griswold 40-yard line. Jax Higgins, designed run, takes it off right tackle, and has eight on first down, almost to the 30-yard line. I love it. They're attacking again what this defense is giving them, the flats, the out routes, and the outside run play. So. They continue this, and this defense doesn't change. Right now, they're still a little bit numb. It looks like just the uh, Wolverines are just waiting to see what happens. Higgins going to throw. Throws it for Westcott. What and, a hit. Oh, the hit. And there's going to be a penalty against Peltier. Helmet to helmet. Because of the defenseless receiver. Westcott had not gotten his head fully around yet. We learned this each of the past couple weeks. We've seen it. And what the rule says is when the player's head has not fully turned around yet. Exactly. You can wrap him, but you cannot tackle or hit him. So what what the defender should have done is literally come right up to him as he caught the ball, wrap them up, but you can't hit him or drive him to the we ground. We go back to tackling again. So part of the fundamentals of tackling is we want to put the head to the side where the ball would be. So in that situation, what he was trying to do was just trying to square him up. He shouldn't have put the head to the side, wrapped. That would have been a great play. We've seen that last week in both NFAs at perspective when he running back got hit with the helmet and on the uh, other side when that route kind of flat and he got hit without turning his body around. So that rule is there to keep those guys safe, and it's very important. And I think Peltier and, and all the players that we've seen called again, it's it's an almost impossible play as a defender. Yep. A, because the timing is, is you don't know. Right. You know, half a second later, it becomes a legal hit. Yes. Once his head's around. So it's all about coaching. It's it. very challenging to, to know how to take a little steam off. Yeah. But it'll be first down, Waterford. Higgins keeps it. Straight up the middle and wrestled quickly to the ground by Jacob Hamill. Gain of maybe two or three. It'll be second down, Waterford. Who would have thought that this second half brother had this momentum kind of change from the very kickoff, you know what I mean? And, and all of a sudden now that first play causing this disruption. 
Hand off, Sutman, Sutman senses the end zone again. He's down inside the two again. This is back-to-back -back drives where Brady Sutman has gotten down to the goal line and Waterford will have it first and goal from the one yard line. What a run. Talk about attitude and runs today. I mean, they both teams have been having some great run plays, but Waterford now is having the edge. Higgins gives it back to Sutman. He bounces off right tackle, churning, they're pushing, and he's gonna be marked at the one, second and goal, Lancers. You know, with the defense being so scrunched inside, it would be great to do a little play action rollout. He'd probably be unblocked getting into the end zone. We'll see what happens here. Second down and goal, ball is at the two yard line. Sutman remains the lone setback. Higgins under center, gives it to Westcott. Westcott cuts it back inside, touchdown, Waterford Lancers. We got a ball game, brother. Noah Woo! Westcott gets the Lancers within six extra point pending. Still got plenty of time in the game. Well, these fans are standing up right now, cheering along. And the fan is rocking it all night here. <laughs> Sheehan will come in for the extra point for Waterford. Snap is good, hold is good, kick is wide left. And it'll remain a six point Whoa. wind. Uh, win yeah, Griswold, we're talking to Wyndham. <laughs> Griswold lead, 8-12 remaining, six point Griswold lead, but Waterford right back in it again. Come on back, eight minutes of football remaining. You're watching Game Day live on theday.com. Being part of a great community is so important. People helping and supporting others can be very uplifting and contagious. At Philomena's Restaurant, that's exactly what you get. It's the community hub for not just Waterford, but all of southeastern Connecticut. Birthday parties, anniversary dinners, weddings, sports banquets, a drink with friends, and of course, charity events. Philomena's has been, is, and will always be there for the community. Celebrate and support southeastern Connecticut at Philomena's. Philomena's, Utopia Plaza in Waterford. Waterford. 8-12 remaining in the ball game. Waterford has taken every punch that Griswold has thrown. That's and then right. they've delivered a whole bunch of their own. And it's a six point game with 8-12 remaining. And more hopeful, I think, than ever before because what Waterford has done in the last few possessions is they don't find a way to try to get turnovers, whether yep. it's the punched out fumble, or the onside kick, Waterford trying to be opportunistic, and they want desperately to keep the ball away from Griswold because Montigny and company have been so very, very good. Ball's loose! Ball's loose! Peltier had be. it. Peltier had it, and That's it got loose. Wow. Griswold Talk recovers. about magical. Or is it the full moon? One of the two, brother. So Peltier recovered his own fumble. But wow, yeah. if that had gone Waterford's way, this place would have come undone. Now Waterford defense needs to step up. Mm -hmm. Griswold with 39 points has seen the combination of Kincaid, Rubino, and Kyle Montigny have been just too much for the Waterford defense. Can the Lancers dial up a stop or can Griswold move down the field? Big thing right now is ball security. Cassidy gives to Rubino. Rubino with a shifty cut, still on his feet, and he crosses midfield. First down, on first down, Kincaid Rubino. Wow, way to silence the whole attitude of that defense with that great run there. Rubino just cut it side on the super power play and just went straight downhill, man. You talk about the double wing system. When you attack between the tackles, you go full blast, and he is showing a lot of promise. A big needed play there for the Griswold Wolverines. Yeah, Rubino and Montigny yeah, are man. just so difficult to One, stop two. on those wings. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Turner's no slouch from that fullback position either. <laughs> Cassidy surveys. There's some pressure coming from Waterford. Toss to Rubino. Breaks a tackle. Now it's race time. Kincaid Rubino, one man to beat. He's tripped up. And he will get it, another first down, about the 32-yard line. Westcott got him by the shoestring. 
Well, save the touchdown. Save the touchdown, yeah. Again, the risk of calling a blitz play with a double wing is that there's no second level player if you send pressure like that. And again, he found a way to break through that. Unbelievable. Great tackle, though. When we talk about tackling, <laughs> that was a much needed tackle for the Waterford Lances. First and 10, Wolverines from the Waterford 32 yard line. Luke Cassidy. Gives it to Montigny. Montigny cuts back toward the middle after it was well defended. The edge was set nicely, funneled it back inside, and Montigny took what they gave him, and he got five. What can Waterford do here right now to cause this offense to just stutter a little bit? Maybe, you know, hopefully if Griswold can hold it, you know, they could be a little offsides or a misplay here that would help Waterford out. But this defense has to find a way right now to stop this offense. Seniors, Rabino and Montigny have led the way. The powerful scrum play, boy. Turner, that a lot of yards, right? <laughs> yeah, Turner's gonna be short by a yard. Here comes third down, but this is too, you know, Griswold's gonna, this is where, again, you could see Griswold, do they want to put it in the air and try to, you know, I don't know land they, that what, last haymaker? What do you think with a moon like this? What do you think? Anything could happen, right, brother? I think they're going to put the ball in Kincaid Rubino's hands. Yeah. That's what I think. That's 100 over 100 on that one. Let's see. Cassidy pitches to Rubino, reverses field, has the first down. Hurdles up over the man and pushed out of bounds. <laughs> Kincaid Rubino loves to go high, and that time he got pushed out of bounds. First down, Wolverines. What an athletic person, man. Just that situation was going to be a little inside play. He stopped. He saw the penetration, so he bounced it back outside and used his speed. Ball's marked at the 13-yard line. First and 10, Griswold. Five minutes remaining in the ball game. Wolverines looking to go back up two scores. Montigny shuffles. Instead, it's Rubino, and he's got the angle, cuts it back inside. He's bumped. Touchdown, Wolverines. Kincaid Rubino, he's dangerous, mm -hmm. and that duo has been dynamic. What a great series for... Uh Griswold there to keep that momentum into their favor right now. So that puts Griswold back on top by 12, 45-33 with 444 remaining in the fourth. So remember last week we were thinking, man, 77 points, that was a lot of points now, but we've lasted it by one point this week. Maybe next week we can get a 100-point game. You never know. Our next football game is scheduled, I believe, to be Killingly in New London. Oh, really? But that is subject to change based on schedules. Going for two is Griswold. Toss right to Rabino. Cuts it back inside. Dives and gets the two-point conversion. It's good. So with 4.44 remaining in the fourth, Griswold back on top. 47.33 will be back for the stretch. You're watching Game Day live on the day.com. After the game, follow Game Day CT on social media to see our pick for the Scient Federal Credit Union Top Play. Pave the way for your students' financial success with a MySci account from Scient Federal Credit Union. Open a high-yield MySci savings account today and help support a positive financial future for your student. Visit ScientFCU.org to learn more. Forty-seven, thirty-three. Griswold on top of Waterford with four forty-four remaining in the ball game. Waterford has answered every Griswold punch, but they just haven't been able to draw even since going down right off the bat in the early in the first period. They were down two scores early. They've yeah. gotten it to within one a couple of times, but Griswold has had an answer every time. Uh, give credit to the coaching staff at Waterford for knowing that hey, this not this season doesn't mean that we just lay flat. They've been fighting, they've been showing a lot of passion, a lot of brotherhood in the game, 
and you know, credit to them that this soon will be something that they will be successful going on to the uh, following season. Peter, can you give us an updated uh, halftime score, Stonington and Wyndham? Stonington leads 13-12 at halftime. Wow. Rubino with the kick down at the 30-yard line and crossing the 45-yard line down to the 47. And Sutman has a good return for Waterford. They have good field position. So either way you look at it, if Stonington holds on and wins, yep. they will be undefeated at 7-0. and mm -hmm. And Griswold, assuming they hold on, will be 6-1 and one in what game. will be a fabulous game next yeah. week. Uh, even if, if Wyndham were to win, it would still be 6-1 and one Stonington and 6-1 and one Griswold. So and, and that'll be at Stonington? That game is at Stonington. 6.30 on Friday night. Ooh, that's going to be a good one. Lancers first and 10. Higgins will operate from the shotgun. He'll keep it himself. Break one tackle, break another tackle, cross midfield, and Waterford will go, go, go. Yeah, Higgins has a lot of heart, man. And that young player definitely has that all-star status with him, and the way he plays just helps the offense out. Second down, Higgins will throw. Pressured, lobs it, looking for Sutman, tries to come back to the ball, but it was underthrown at the 30-yard line incomplete. I mean, you expect these quarterbacks nowadays that are mobile quarterbacks. The toughest thing about it is that after you run a play nine yards, you get tackled by two or three guys. You got to come back and now keep your poise to drop back, get yourself together, and breathe and relax while you throw the ball. That's very tough, you know, but uh, Higgins, he's doing a really good job. You know, going back through the annals of, we have, we have seen in our day, we yep. had quarterbacks that could throw. Yep. We had some quarterbacks that could run. But we didn't have as many quarterbacks as you have now who genuinely can right. run and throw. Exactly. That's the evolution of football. Higgins is going to keep it himself. Bounces to the outside. He has a first down. And the chains will move. Time will stop. While they move the chains, Waterford driving with 4.04 remaining. You know what I admire about Jack Higgins? His first name is my favorite cheese puff to eat. Jack's. You enjoy the Jacks? Oh, I love those, because they're cheaper. But it, you know, it got more zest to it. Higgins rolls, looking to throw, going to keep it himself, and sacked behind the line of scrimmage. DeAndre Bransford was there and brought him down. A much needed defensive play by him. Also a childhood game that I never quite understood. Oh, never. Boun it was bouncing a ball and scooping up Jacks, never quite understood it. I almost lost my eye one time doing it. Higgins to throw, pressured, setting up a screen, and Sutman had one man, and that one man was Dean Menzano, but Menzano read it all the way, and another loss for Waterford. Yeah, that screenplay has been picked up very well by the Wolverines, and in that situation, that was not going to happen. So third and 14. Big situation here for Waterford. This is where you got to try to get your player playmaker, Quinn Speller, involved. Yeah, definitely. His name hasn't been called in a minute. Got to get in there. Sutman is the lone setback. Higgins rolls right, rolls, throws, has a man. It's Spencer, first down, uh -huh. close to the 30-yard line. Again, that, out, that flat route, that flood route is open, and they've been doing well with that. I will say Spencer being in the lineup really does change and enhance the Waterford offense. He and Westcott yep. are both so good in slot space. Yeah. It allows Speller to really be that stretch player on the yep. outside, which is what Higgins and Sutman need. They need stretch and they need the yep. middle of the field and then the flats, which is really where Spencer and Westcott both thrive. First down, Higgins to throw. Throws deep over the middle looking for Sutman and it's intercepted. Intercepted by the Wolverines. He's got room. He's Heading got room. down the sideline. Aiden Peltier, 10-5. Touchdown, Griswold. Pick wow. six. Now, that was a great defensive play. Unbelievable. Wow, what you thought was going to be a catch. He just jumped into it. And when he made that catch, he did not stop. He just kept on running like Forrest Gump all the way down the sidelines to get to the end zone and score. Don't forget it was Peltier who was called for the penalty mm -hmm. when he hit Westcott as a quote-unquote 
you know, defenseless helmet. receiver. Yep. That time, rather than the hit, he went for the pick. He went for the pick. And it turned into six. Wow, just so sad because Waterford, again, just showing a lot of energy and a lot of pride. And, you know, situations like that definitely burst the bubble. 53-33. Brother, I would have never thought uh, it was going to be this. These are the games that, ex that exhaust games, a play-by-play, -play yeah. man. My throat hurts a little bit, but I got some lozenges. And then, then the lifesaver saved me. Well, the kick is up. It is through. It is true. And with 2.33 remaining, 54-33. We'll be back for the final couple of minutes. You're watching Game Day Live on theday.com. After the game, follow Game Day CT on social media to see our pick for the Scient Federal Credit Union top play. Pave the way for your students' financial success with a MySci account from Scient Federal Credit Union. Open a high-yield MySci savings account today and help support a positive financial future for your student. Visit scientfcu.org to learn more. Fifty-four thirty-three, Griswold on top. Every time Waterford answers, Griswold asks a new question, and it's fifty-four thirty-three. Out of town scoreboard, Peter. What do you got for an update? Hmm. So, Killingly and East Lyme are middle of the third quarter. Killingly leads forty-two twenty-one. Wow, this might not be the highest scoring game of the week. No. Peter, do you have any U twelve uh, uh, more uh, standings or any other updated scores for us? Uh, I, I believe the rest of the U-12 soccer schedule will be taking place over the weekend, so you're going to oh. have to wait. So this is the game of the week. It was the game of the week tonight? Patience it, is it, a virtue. It was. 54-33. <laughs> See, Peter thinks I'm being patronizing, but I'm actually – I love the youth scores. I'd, take, I'd do youth scores mm -hmm. all night long. Yeah, I love that stuff. Those grade 8 soccer games are amazing, how those players can get that ball all the way across the net there. Rumor has it that that ball was on the turf. I thought he was down. I heard no whistle, and that's no whistle. Looks like it's going to be Griswold ball. I thought it was. Yeah, I thought he fell down, but it seemed like it might have came out before. Could have been a rip off the ball. You know, definitely was recovered by uh, Griswold. We have an injured player, so we're going to take a quick break. Two twenty-one remaining. You're watching Game Day Live on the Day.com. Fall is here, which means it's time for Game Day's Great Eight. The best eight plays of the week submitted by you, the viewers, on any of our social media platforms. You send us the best videos from practice or the game, any sport in the fall, and we might see about putting it on the Great Eight of the week. is a production of The Day Publishing Company. If you'd like to support Game Day and help us continue to bring you the best in Connecticut high school sports, please consider purchasing a print or digital subscription to The Day at theday.com slash subscribe. 2.20 remaining in the ball game. Brady Sutman heads to the sideline. He's walking off all right. 54-33 Griswold. Of course, at the end of this game, you're going to want to check out all our social medias at Game Day CT and find out the science play of the game as well as watch the interviews with the winning head coach and the player of the game. Right now, Griswold with a 21-point lead and the football with 2.20 remaining. Cassidy hands to Rubino. Uh, check that. That is not Rubino. That is Aiden Cutler. Cutter checking in the game, playing the wing spot that Rubino had been playing. So... Aiden Cutter, the sophomore, getting a carry here and five-yard gain. You know, the game the way it is right now, it's probably good to save your players, knowing that next week is going to be really important for them. And they have got a lot of work to do. I mean, this is something that they did well. They got the victory, so, you know, close to getting the victory. But the, the challenge is going to be there next week to see how they're going to play against. That could be a shootout next week, too. Mm -hmm. Stonington and Griswold, those two teams, that could be last team with the football. We saw Stonington and East Lyme in a game like that. We know Stonington can score points. That could be epic. Of course, watch, it'll be 7-6. <laughs> Handoff, Turner, big hole up the middle, dragging Speller, and Speller gets him down to the 10-yard line. But Josh Turner has a first down for Griswold. Now, we didn't see this last week when we were talking about kneeling the ball. But this is a good situation right now where they can set up the victory and uh, finish this game clean. Yeah. 
So the ball's gonna be at the 12, and I think with the clock ticking down towards a minute, Griswold will be able to run things out. No. <laughs> Cheerleaders, don't ever lose cheer. It's right there in the description. I got to give them a shout out today. All those girls, God bless you for the energy that you brought here. The fan base, the student body was really, really positive tonight. A lot of good energy here. Victory formation for the Wolverines. They'll let the clock run. So while the clock is running out on Waterford, it will take the time to say again that next week, Starts championship week here on game day. Wednesday will be at Montville for the girls soccer division two, division one championship. Awesome. On Thursday, we'll be at Ledger for the boys division two and division one soccer championships. And Friday, we will be at New London for the volleyball division two and division one championships. And on Saturday, you'll get swimming highlights and interviews for swimming. That's what's happening next week. And then it'll be back to our football schedule as we head into Thanksgiving. Four teams in the ECC, count it maybe five, still alive for postseason berths. And one of them, the Griswold Wolverines, have moved to six and one next week. They'll have a huge showdown with Stonington at Stonington in a game with epic playoff possibilities. Of course, you want to follow our social media, Game Day CT, for the Scient Play of the Game interviews upcoming with Greg Wilcox and our player of the game. As always, for Peter Wappy and the crew, for the coach, Pasta Santabria. That's right, brother. All three pounds of pasta. I'm Casey <laughs> O'Neill. Thank you for joining us. Good night, everybody. Have a happy Halloween.